Heavenly Father, we praise your holy name. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father. Father, we have so much to thank you about that really words cannot possibly capture it. If we understand, if we truly look back upon our lives, if we, if we understand how your hand has been upon our lives, guiding our lives, adjusting our course throughout decades of time in so many cases, we would be on our knees every single day just praising you in tears. Father, we ought to be there. We ought to be understanding the depth of your touch upon our lives and to understand the significance of, of the days that we live in right now and just be singing your praise as we go through the challenges that we have on a daily basis. The blessings that we have and sometimes jobs that we absolutely can't stand and hate and loathe to even consider getting up to in the next day. But yet, Father, you have your hand upon it. Father, we thank you. We praise you for the challenges. We praise you for the problems, the trials, the tribulations. We thank you, Lord. We just want to thank you because we know that you are working a perfect change upon our lives, that you are burning away all of the, the, the dross from us. You are bringing us to a place where we will be able to handle the difficulties, the times that are coming upon the earth, the darkness that is going to be happening, to be able to empathize and to be compassionate to people that have problems that are far, far more significant than the ones that we are dealing with right now. And for those of us who are currently going through a blessed period, we just thank you, Father, for that. We thank you for the peace because we all need a little bit of time in the mountain, on the mountainside, to be able to gaze up the stars and give you praise and peace. We thank you, Father God, for, the, for, for all of these touches upon our lives, for awakening, awakening us at the times that you did awaken us. And we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will fill us with a strength, a, a desire, a, a, a yearning to be able to touch other people's lives lives before it is too late, Father God, for them. We don't know when that big red lever is going to be pulled. We, it could be months. It could be weeks. It could be days. It could be years. But, Father, we just believe. We just believe based upon so many of the prophecies that we've been following over the last 10 years. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for helping us to see the shift in the prophetic words that have been coming out of the mouths of so many of the prophets, Father God, many of which we've trusted for years. And we thank you, Father God, for being able to detect and discern that shift and be able to follow along and stay close by your side, hearing the truth and be able to see and discern the things that are happening across this world to understand that the Olivet Discourse is unfolding, that the uh, that Revelation chapter 6 is unfolding before our eyes, that the things that you have warned us about since before the foundations of the earth really are happening right now. And we praise you, Father God. We thank you for keeping us on, on the edge of our seats, and we pray that you will give us a spirit of boldness upon each of our hearts that we will touch, that we will gently and humbly touch the hearts and the minds of those around us within the realm of our influence, that we can leave that seed, that seed that is touched by the living water, that seed that is watered by the crystal river, that will blossom and bear fruit at the perfect moment in time, Father God, as the days ahead of us grow darker, even darker than they are right now for those of us who are awake that can't even believe that so many people cannot see how dark the things have become across this world. But nevertheless, we continue to push through. We thank you for this time that we have now, Father God, that we're able to draw in closer to you, to purge any sin, any uh, uh, even winning or unwitting disobedience that we may have in our lives. Father, we pray in Jesus' name that you will raise it up before us, that you will help us to see it, that you will expunge it from our very existence, that you will push us hard uh, through chastening away from the guardrails, Father God, that we are on that steady course, that narrow path in Jesus' name, that we can touch other people's lives lives in a holy and righteous manner, saying the perfect words that would come only from your throne room through the presence of the Holy Spirit upon us at that perfect time, Father God, that we can bring in the biggest final harvest that the world could have ever imagined since before there was time. Yes, even when the universes were being architected. We praise your holy name, Father God, and we thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. And now to him, Lord Jesus, who's able to keep us from stumbling. And present us faultless someday before the presence of your glory, Father God, with exceeding joy. And to you, Father, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power, both now and forever. Amen. 
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, it is uh, really going to be kind of cool tonight to have the two, uh, I would consider the two premier global experts, thank you, Jesus, on this amazing concept that under that uh, that uh, uh, you know this whole concept of Lucifer father of Cain this understanding that the times in the Garden of Eden were and uh, the you know the whole apple thing and everything you know most of us that are you know thinkers you know those of us who you know use critical thinking skills to try to discern the Bible when we when we see things like you know when we understand things like you know Genesis 1 between Genesis 1 1 and 1 2 there really is um, you know, some people call it the gap theory, but in reality, it's not a theory, uh, and um, uh, it's a fact. And um, when we start to see these mysteries unfolding, it starts to explain scriptures that just otherwise simply do not make any sense. Uh, I just noticed that Jonathan Click, God bless his sweet <laughs> I love Jonathan Click, uh, came out with a, a video, you know, uh, telling everybody, you know, uh, he came right out and said, "Did you not know that we are gods?" And he, he's really what he's doing he's pointing everybody to john 10 34 where jesus says does it not say in in, in your law that ye are gods which is a direct reference to psalm 82 um and these are just concepts that the devil has done such a fantastic job of masquerading or hijacking and convoluting uh in such a way you know imagine uh create you know uh these religions that are nothing less than apostate and run by in a a group of some of the darkest most macabre satanist in the world really essentially uh and then you take them and then you give them a belief system or you or you create a thing called the new age which you you know, as most many of us know, came out of that whole, you know, um, Lucius Trust, that whole, you know, creepy uh, background there that that you could just go on and on and on and on and on about. Uh, but but you know, because because the, the the birth of the New Age just goes all the way back in the Manly P. Hall writings and things like that. You know, when you when you get your arms around the depth of the darkness and you understand that they embrace those concepts, you know, they you know, and then and then of course Christianity, they're like, oh no, it's the boogeyman, and Christianity runs away from the concepts because oh no oh you sound like a new ager yeah you're saying you know even though that jesus said john 10 34 that have i not said in your law that ye are gods and then you go back to psalm 82 and you see where the reference is and you make the connection spiritually if you have the ability to discern it that's why jesus used to say all the time he used to say all the time if you can hear it if you can discern it if you know he didn't say it exactly like that but you know what i'm saying and there's so many places where there's mysteries in the bible if you can receive it he used to say a lot and 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 you know what and and the truth is most people can i mean straight up I, you know i'm 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 going to just say it like it is I, we don't have enough time on this earth to get into a mamby pamby you know uh uh you know uh uh you know huggy wuggy furry white kitten debate over these things at the end of the day you're either going to receive it or you're not and if you don't want to receive it it's okay but if you are one of those people, you know, uh, uh, Proverbs 25, verse 2, it is the glory of God to conceal of the matter and the glory of kings uh, to search out a matter. Praise God. Uh, what does that mean? Does that mean that those who, you know, tear apart all the biblical mysteries and wonder and use their sanctified imagination with a humble and contrite spirit, wondering, understanding that 1 Corinthians 8, 2 says that if anyone thinks they know anything, they know nothing yet as they ought to know. Pre- prepared to eat and uh, indeed gobble down crow if that's what's required, right? Amen. <laughs> hey, hey, get back in that cage. Don't even try that. Uh, anyway, they're making me hungry. But anyway, the uh, you know when when you know what, does that mean that there is I don't know maybe an unspoken unwritten crown to be given you know a king's crown to be given to those who dig into the mysteries of the Bible. I mean, there's so much. I mean, you look at Malachi 3.16, and you talk about – here, I'll read it to you. It's just very, very cool. It's just one of those scriptures that anybody who doesn't know about Malachi 3.16, uh, you got to know about it. It's just one of those things where, where when you know about what it's saying about this whole concept of a book of remembrance and how God feels about it when we're talking about him, uh, you know, and we're just having these, like, fireside chats – about our father, you know, we're thinking about him, we're obsessed with him, we're amazed, we're awed, we think he's, you know, the, the, the whole Bible and everything, and we have these conver- now, iron sharpens iron and all that kind of stuff. When, when, we, when we're like that, it, there's rewards, there are, uh, you know, rewards that are just, 
waiting for us in all of eternity. And they could be very, very, very significant rewards. For example, it says in three uh, in Malachi three sixteen it says, Then those who feared the Lord spoke often to one another. And the Lord listened and heard them. So when we're having these conversations on the phone with our friends and, you know, whoever it is, or even via email or text messages, and we're talking about the Lord, you know, or talking about the kingdom and kingdom things. And, wow, could it be that John 1034 is referring to Psalms 82? Could it be that Lucifer really is the father of Cain? Could they have been fraternal twins? What really happened? What was that apple? What was that apple? Did all of mankind fall because somebody took a bite of an apple? Or is it a much bigger, deeper mystery than all that? So, and, and you know, and then, and then and it says, and the Lord listened and hearkened unto them. So a book of remembrance was written before our Father, before him, for those who feared the Lord and who meditate upon his name. They shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts. On that day I'll make them my jewels. I will spare them as a man spares his own son who serves him. Then you shall again discern between the righteous and the wicked, between one who serves God and one who does not serve him. Praise God. You know, there, it, it, I, I, think it's, I think there's extra rewards. I think they're humongous rewards. I think they're even unwritten rewards. They're not the basic, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, you know, crown of this or crown of righteousness or crown of life or whatever. You know, I think there's, there's even greater rewards. I do. I believe. I, it's just, I believe this. It's just me. And maybe I'm wrong. But when I look at the scriptures that talk about these, you know, undocumented rewards, the being written in the book of remembrance for those who fear the God, Lord, uh, there are scriptures and psalms that are woven in there about, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, how much God loves it when we 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 talk to Him in the in the watches of the night, and 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 you know, when we when we get our arms around how much our heavenly Father longs for us to have. Um, obsessive, intimate understandings, discussions, talks with him, openness, frankness, just being completely laying it all out, you know, not being irreverent, but at the same time and being very respectful and understanding and, and you know, and but but also being upfront, you know, and, and understanding that he already knows how we feel. And so what's the point in trying to hide how you feel? I mean, Psalm 139 verses 1 through 6 just says it all. Praise God. And when you have that kind of openness with the Father, I really believe that 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 takes you to a whole new level, a whole new level of your of your communion with our Father God and with the Lord Jesus Christ, and and that's a place I think that we where we all really want to strive to be. Now I'm not saying that you have to go out and and embrace every single mystery, but it should intrigue you to look into these things. Uh, the, the you know the Bereans were more nobler than these. They they searched the scriptures daily to see if it was so. Acts seventeen eleven. So are we nobler than the other theologians? Are we nobler than the people that are considered to be part of the church when in reality they're really just kind of part of the foolish virgins? And you could see they're kind of part of the church, but there's a lot of scripture that's talking like Ephesians 5.27 that's really talking about the remnant bride. That's really talking about the wise virgins only. Um, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's hard. You know, to, to, to be sure about a lot of these things. But what is exciting is to wonder about them, to, 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 you know, then the Lord, you know, then those who feared the Lord spoke to one another and the Lord listened to them and he heard them. And a book of remembrance was written before him for those that feared the Lord and meditated upon his name. And that's what we're going to be doing tonight. Praise Jesus. I think it's exciting to have, um, you know, Brother Zen Garcia, uh, the author of the book, uh, you know, Lucifer, father of Cain. And I remember remember when, because I was still kind of, you know, I still had to have a little Pepto-Bismol at first, you know, when I first, when this, when this mystery got, got revealed to me, I was really struggling, you know, where do you see that? I was having a hard time finding it in the Bible, and then Zen was explaining, well, you really got to take a look at the Aramaic Targums. When you take a look at the Aramaic Targums, 
Some of the words are slightly different, which many would argue, many scholars would argue that the Aramaic Targums are more accurate of a translation than any other that you can get your hands on uh, that, get, that really get into the nitty-gritty of some of the finer points of the metaphors that are woven into the mysteries of the early books uh, that were completely driven by the Holy Spirit through arguably uh, you know, um, uh, uh, Moses. And, um, and it's just fascinating uh, to, to, to wonder about these things and to be excited about these things, to be able to look and have experts and people who have the time, like Dr. Joy, to be able to look at these uh, subjects. You know, Brother Zen was on uh, the Prophecy Club with Stan Johnson and did a, uh, you know, a, a series on this as well. And then when I found out that Dr. Joy uh, had uh, you know, um, also came to the same discernment, I was like, whoa, that's amazing. I had one of these moments. I really did. No, I really did. I was like, wait a minute, there's this lady named Dr. Joy Pugh, and she came to the same thing about Lucifer, Father of Cain, and I was like, then I was really perking up. I was like, okay, now, this is starting to get really interesting. And then it starts to explain anomalies in the New Testament where it says things like not of Cain, uh, who was of the evil one. Uh, you know, that that's a pretty, that's a jam-packed, exploding mystery scripture where it says, uh, you know, like Cain, who was of the evil one. Uh, you know, what's what's that of the evil one? And why call out Cain? I mean, out of all, all what about Esau? God hated Esau. God hated Esau. What about Esau? Why did they bring up Cain and say he was of the evil one? Why? They could have pointed to a, a Jeroboam for crying out loud. They could have pointed to just about that, and probably three or four dozen Old Testament, um, uh, you know, actors, uh, you know, in in the Scripture as you know, uh, you know, of the devil, uh, of the serpent, uh, you know, part of the serpent seed. Uh, but no, they said Cain, and he was of the evil one. What was that reference? And was that a direct? Was that giving away a mystery? Hmm. I don't know. I, I find these subjects very very interesting because, you know, one of those times, I think we need to be able to defend our scripture, and I think one of the things where the church is absolutely unable to defend the scripture is when an unbeliever comes up to them and says, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, are you here to tell me that the people that are in Yemen right now who are dying by the millions are suffering because a woman took a bite of an apple? See, it leaves something to be desired. It does. And how does it, how does a preacher or a teacher or a man of oh you know what do they do? They, you know if they don't have a deer in the headlights look in their face, then they must be practiced at glazing over things with platitudes to uh, try to avoid this. Oh, well, God works in mysterious ways. It's like the, the the most ingenious way to say I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, but you got to love Jesus anyway and believe the Bible because it's the truth. We're not able to appropriate def appropriately defend a lot of the things that are in the Scripture without doing that deep dive dig into the Aramaic Targums, into the pseudo-apigrapha and the Apocrypha, and to be able to properly discern it against the backdrop of the 66-book canon. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And to look at the Hebrew and to look at the Greek and to be able to try to understand what are these mysteries? Why did Jesus warn us? You know, if you can receive it, there are so many things that are just so amazing that are woven. And, and, and what are the rewards? I mean, you know, I don't I, I you know, I, I, I wonder if and this is me. I'm just thinking out loud. I, I don't know. I, I'm crazy and wacky like that. I, like I said, I'm not I'm not bashful about the fact that I'm a walking payday bar, a bag of nuts. But I, I love the Lord with all of my heart. I love the father. I love everything about the Bible. I love the cosmological understanding of the universes and the dimensions and all of creation and the kingdom of God and how big this all is. It is the most exciting thing that we could ever hope for in our wildest imagination. Thank you, Jesus. But think about it. Is it possible that the people who don't learn these things, or at least don't make some attempt to understand the mysteries that are woven throughout the scriptures, to go through additional training 
You know, when you go back and you review the Odin Hetrick testimony, he had to go through training. I mean, he was taken into a room in a city mansion with two aliens. I'm just telling it like it is. You can call them beings. You can say one was male and one was female looking. They scared the heck out of him. His eyes blocked out. He was like, Spirit of God, take me out of here. I don't belong here. And God said to him, Odin, you are staying until you learn your lesson. He was taken into a room in his city mansion with two aliens. They were not indigenous to earth, and they weren't even indigenous to heaven. He had to learn a lesson. Why? Well, if we're going to rule and reign with Jesus Christ over all of creation, what does all of creation entail? Yeah, trillions and trillions and trillions of galaxies. That's exactly what it is. Oh, no, he's a crazy man, that Johnny Baptist. Why would he think about such things like that? Because God's artwork is in the sky, and we should not be turning our backs on his glory. We should be fascinated and enamored with his glory and awed by how big this all is. This is very exciting to be alive right now, to understand and to come to a greater understanding, hopefully, uh, and with a humble and contrite heart, of how enormous. Why is it? Did you ever think about this? Why is it that all, all of a sudden, back in the 60s, right about the same time that the devil was being given a foothold over humanity on a level that he had never been given a foothold before. At the time when peace and love and flower children and free sex and all that kind of weird, creepy you know, stuff was going on, and Kent State and Vietnam War and lies from McNamara and false flag attacks of you know, Gulf of Tonkin and all this other creepy weirdness is happening. And in the middle of all that, you have this paradigm shift where um, uh, there's, there's this sudden explosion of the charismatic movement going on, the Pentecostal uh, para- charismatic movement explodes, and you can say, well, John Todd said that he was part of the 13th Illuminati Council out of Georgia, and he gave him millions of dollars through the Full Gospel Businessmen's Association to create the charismatic movement. Well, guess what, John Todd? You just funded one of the most biggest Holy Spirit explosions that happened in the United States since the Azusa Street Revival. But you didn't know it at the time. Okay, praise God. That is exactly how God works. He'll take that $10 million right out of the hands of the Rockefeller Foundation, hand it over to one of his churches, and say, guess what? Bless my people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, God is in control. We're so busy pointing the finger at the devil and saying, well, the devil did this and the devil did that, and this person said that, and the queen said this, and you know, and then, and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And Obama said something's going to happen at Christmas, the queen, and, and all that kind of stuff. And a shout out to you, Sister Lori. God bless you. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway, and at the end of the day, why doesn't it ever happen? We're so busy watching YouTube videos and go, wow, look at the devil. Uh, you know, George Soros is, uh, you know, he's a shape-shifting reptilian, so whatever he says must be what's going to come true. There's going to be a financial collapse, and it's going to happen next week, and it's going to be 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, and that's when the rapture is going to be. And, all blah, 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 and we all come up with these hyper cycles and all these weird things, and they never happen. Why? Because God is in control. That's how big this is. When we realize that God is in control, then we can finally come to a place in our walk, especially those of us who are suffering from the Ecclesiastes 118 problem, uh, you know, and and so I don't misquote it and I don't paraphrase it because it's just that important of a verse. It's so cool. For in much wisdom is much greed, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. When you were living in the paradigm of Ecclesiastes 118, when that has become your life, I remember like, oh gosh, it was like 10 years ago, I was working at PwC and, um, uh, you know, having a conversation with somebody about some of the stuff that I was discovering out on the internet. I was just waking up at the time and I, and I, and I was having this, I was kind of testing waters and talking to this person about it. And, and you know, he looked at me and he said, what a what a harsh burden to carry such information on your shoulders. Out of the clear blue sky. This guy wasn't even a especially good friend of mine either. Uh, I don't even know why I was talking to him about it. Probably trying to plant a seed. But it, he, he stopped in his tracks, I remember, and he turned to me and he said, what a huge burden to carry on your shoulders to know such things. Was God speaking through that man? I don't even remember who it was. Was God speaking through that man? Was God letting me know? in a subtle way through those words, that not only would I have to carry it, I would have to shoulder that burden 
See, back then I had no idea I was going to be on a radio show. I had no idea. All I was doing was a little website. I wasn't really even into Tribulation now at the time. I, I, as a matter of fact, back then I'm not even sure I would even started the website yet. Uh, and if I did, I had just barely begun it. I don't think I started it yet. Um, you know, but, but you know, it kind of, that kind of stuff like bubbles up. It's like embers of fire that God sets in your heart because it's part of the works that you were supposed to walk in that were written in your books before there was time. And the, the, the embers start to burn in your heart, but you can feel it and it's coming. And, and then you look back upon it and you're like, hey, hey. Little did I know I was going to have to shoulder that Ecclesiastes 118 burden for over a decade and more. Maybe even. Yuck. That isn't fun. I'm here to tell you. And I think a lot of the people who listen to this radio show on a regular basis, and those who are waking up, uh, you know, in this second cycle, if you want to call it, if, we want to, if you want to break them into wake up cycles, there's a wake up cycle that occurred back in 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016. Uh, and, then, and then it kind of diminished off. A whole bunch of them got sucked into the riptide of Trumpianity and they floated out to sea. Into the camp of the foolish virgins. Their wigs are no longer trim. And there's no more oil in their lamp. But others stayed at the helm. As Jesus said, he who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is unfit for the kingdom of God. Whew. Ouch. So, and now I believe there's a second wave being brought in. I think people are starting to wake up. They're looking at those California fires. They're looking at the crevasses across the world. There's a whole new wave of believers that are going, wait a minute, something isn't right here. Something isn't right here. I just can't believe. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to Ecclesiastes 118. Welcome to shouldering the burden with all of us. It's not a good place to be. I sit there and watch Hallmark uh, Christmas TV shows, you know, just to get away from it sometimes. You know, I just want to go off into a fantasy world for a little while and pretend that, you know, uh, <laughs> that, you know, uh, uh, you know, I don't know. It, it, everything is just fine and, and everybody loves everybody and we're going to make Christmas cookies and, and give it, teddy bears to our kids and, and, you know, sing Christmas carols and drink eggnog and all that kind of happy stuff. I like to forget about the fires for a second or two. Uh, because it's a heavy burden. I mean, you know, I know people, I know believers that um, have cut themselves off from the world. And when I talk to them, I mean, they literally have cut themselves off. They have no TV, nothing, 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 nothing. And they uh, they literally live completely in a, in, in kind of like a an Elijah cave. They're completely cut off except for their phone or their computer or whatever. But that's about all they have. And they don't really dwell much on those devices either. And so what happens is they, they're in tears continuously. I mean, I, I don't know how anybody can can handle that. I certainly couldn't continue to do this radio show. I can tell you that. I could. There's no possible way. If I didn't take a break, even Jesus would break away from the crowd and go up into the mountains and spend time alone with the Father. He needed a break. What a surprise, right? Don't we all? And um, and so many of us don't have any place to go, anywhere to go. Any, we can't take our children down to the waterfront and spend a little bit of time looking at the world and the sky and God through their eyes and be awed by it, even though oftentimes the parents take it for granted. But for those of us who don't have that, for those of us who are living alone, we're in our late 50s, early 60s, and we're living alone, and we went through a divorce, and we're, we're like, oh, Jesus, please come! Please come, Jesus! Please get me out of here! Hallelujah! Get me off this alien demon and fester rock. But you know what? At the end of the day, we're all working our working out our, you know, salvation with fear and trembling. We're all seeking the Lord. We're all trying to keep our heads together. We're all burdening. We're shouldering that burden of knowing the things that are going to come upon this earth, but, but also keeping it together. That's tricky. We have to keep it together. We've got to shoulder that burden, understand that in much wisdom is much grief, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. And then we've got to be able to live with it. See, it would have been one thing if uh, if Obama and martial law and, and and we were in the full swing of the Antichrist and Christians were getting guillotined right now and, and all that kind of stuff and we were 
You know, the Church of Philadelphia was evacuated off this alien demon infested rock. The first ray wave rescue mission had already occurred, and we wouldn't have to worry about it. We'd all be up in heaven right now, munching out at the wedding supper and just all kinds of cool stuff. And, and again, circle back. Is it possible that those who, you know, Proverbs 25, 2, it's the glory of God to conceal with the matter and the glory of kings to search out a matter? Is it possible that those who have been fervently seeking to understand these mysteries, who are not content in just knowing the superficial stuff, you know, what churchianity embraces. Those who wanted, no, wanted more of God, who, you know what I mean, who knew the earth wasn't 6,000 years old and nobody could convince them of it. And were grieved when they heard well-known theologians trying to defend it, defend the undefendable, no matter how hard they try. I don't care what your name is or whoever you are. The earth is not 6,000 years old, period. All right, now that being said, uh, you know, when you come to these discernments and you're like, oh, wow, and you start to remap the Bible and you look for the mysteries and you're like, oh, my gosh, this is amazing. This is amazing. And all of a sudden, all these things that everybody just passes over the wall and says, well, God works in mysterious ways, which is a way of saying, I have no idea. And then what do you do? What, what is happening to the person that you're supposed to be witnessing to, that you're supposed to be planting seeds to? You have lost that soul. I'm telling you what the answer is. You have lost that. Well, then they were never destined to be, uh, you know, but that's not what the Bible says. If that was true, then we would not ever plant any seeds. We would not ever preach the gospel. We're supposed to be able to defend the faith. So that's what makes this digging into the mysteries of God so exciting because it gives us the opportunity to be able to bring to people that are science-minded, people that are not going to buy the baloney associated with simpleton theology and, and, and say, wait a minute, this is way, way bigger. I tip my hat to Stan Johnson for having uh, 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 Brother Zen on there to talk about these subjects. I, I find these subjects to be absolutely beyond mind-blowing, fascinating, oh my gosh, wow, because it reveals, it reveals the true glory of what we are doing here on this earth. Why are we here? And how awesome is it? And then you're just like, you start to piece all the pieces together, and then when, they, when that inevitable moment of time comes up, and somebody says, just remember to ask it in the form of a question. Don't say it like a fact. When somebody says to you, is all of mankind suffering because one woman ate an apple? What you need to say is, well... Could that story have been highly metaphorical, and could have a lot more actually have happened? Maybe even millions of years before that event. Now you've intrigued the intellect of the individual of whom you are trying to plant the seed, and you didn't make an assertion. You simply asked a question. Now, if their answer is in the affirmative, because you asked a, a, asked a wise question, now you've got them coming to the conclusion that they arrived at the answer on their own. That's known as the Socratic method of teaching. Yeah, Socrates used to use it. Oh, no, he was a Greek. He was of the devil. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of some of the most ingenious people, uh, uh, Max Planck, uh, the list goes on, Ivan Panic. Some of the most ingenious scientists of all time. There's, there, uh, we had uh, David Montine on the program. I believe it was David Montine that was talking about, uh, I think it was him. It might have been, uh, I no, maybe it was Joy Pugh. I can't remember. But she, uh, somebody was saying about how, uh, uh, how godly actually Albert Einstein really was, how much he actually believed in God. You know, you know the, the basic reading on Albert Einstein was he really wasn't that much of a believer in God. If you look at the superficial writings out there, but, but, but evidently that's not the case. There's so much that we fall for easily because it happens to be on Wikipedia or whatever the case, but there's always another side of the story. Isn't there always like about eight different sides to the story? Lines upon lines, precepts upon precepts, here a little, there a little. And doesn't that make the story more exciting? It does. It's very, very possible that by the time we make it to heaven, 
that we realize that we have only gone two layers in a 777 layer, you know, surprise of awesomeness. I have a feeling that there are special rewards, special uh, – this is just based on the testimonies of people that have been taken to heaven and how earth is an accelerated training program for those of us who eventually, hopefully, are brought to that discernment and get it. And for those who do not learn while they're on the earth and do not uh, in, immerse themselves in all things of God and, and, and just completely become obsessed with all things and become that whole Malachi 316 dynamic and all that, you know, when, 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 you know it, 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 you're not getting the accelerated program. That's the point. If you're just sitting on the pews and you're just accepting what, what, whatever it is and you're not being a good Berean and searching the Scripture daily to see if it is so, if you're not doing all those things, then the concept may be that maybe that, that you're not going to be in the accelerated programs when we get to heaven, that you're going to have to go through a whole lot, a lot, a lot of more training. You know, could it be that some of the people that have uncovered a lot of these mysteries will actually be teachers of some of these mysteries in heaven to those who are unwilling to accept them or even investigate them while on the earth? I don't know. But I do wonder about these things. I do wonder about these things. So I, I, I think it's very, very exciting to have Dr. Joy on the show. I think it's very, very exciting to have her on the show on the same time as Brother Zen. I think there's some really exciting things that we're, we're going to be discovering about tonight. I think this is a super exciting subject and really unravels uh, the depth of the metaphor that's associated with the whole Garden of Eden story. And I do recommend, if you can get your hands on it, uh, to get a, a copy of, of the books that both of them have written, especially uh, you know uh, uh, Eden Armageddon uh, and uh, also uh, – uh, Son, sons of God, who are we and why are we here? Because, boy, oh, boy, there's some – oh, man, the concepts are just super exciting. It just unravels all kinds of mysteries. And, again, even Zen himself, and so, same with Dr. Joy, they both say, don't you know, don't believe me. Just take a look at the data. Take a look at the data. Pray about it. Seek the Lord. Look at the Bible. Go back and look at the Aramaic Targums. They're available. Go look at the text. See what you think. You know, Consider this. Be a good Berean and search the Scripture daily to see if it is up. And then – are you excited? Did the Spirit witness to you? And are you humble enough to realize that you might be wrong? And can you present it to somebody in the form of a question so that it becomes a seed that blossoms at that perfect time? And maybe when, they're, when, when, when the giant fire is heading directly at their house and they know they're about to lose everything, they say, Jesus! See, you never know when that seed is going to pop open and blossom into a beautiful flower for all those who call out upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And on that note, I feel like taking the apocalyptic bullet point challenge for tonight. It's been a while since I did this. Okay. Ready? Okay. All right. Here goes. <sighs> Ready? Planet X, Nibiru, Second Sun, FEMA camps, FEMA coffins, great aliens, alien abductions, FEMA trains, mass graves, Nick Bicecanners, guillotines, mind control slaves, Sol Schneider, Dulcie Wars, Bob Lazar, reverse engineers, alien spacecraft, Bruce Allen Walton, Utah State Penitentiary, Disclosure Project, Clifford Stone, 58 documented species, Georgia Guidestone, reduced population of 500 million, Islamic Rise, I'm Almaty, False Messiahs, Operation Garden Plot, MK Ultra, 9 11's inside job, Israeli Messiah, Georgia State Collapse, Martin Bush in charge of Spiracom, 8 9 11 Truth, Building 7 Collapses, but not hit by plane, 7 7 Ripple Effect, Establishment of Northcom, Elimination of Posse Comitatus, Russian and Chinese troops on American soil, Denver Airport Underground Bunkers, Forces of the Apocalypse, Close Encounters of the Third Time Coordinates, Deep Underground Military Bases, CIA and Key Operations relocate to Denver, Atlantis, Lemuria, Middle East Muslim Riots, Public Video Surveillance Cameras, Unified Global Control Grid, World Government, NATO, President Directors, 9251, National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, No Habeas Corpus, Extraordinary Rendition, Military Industrial Complex, Military Extraterrestrial Industrial Complex, Chemtrails, High Frequency Active Aurora Research Program, Heart, Magneto Leviton Train Systems, Genetically Modified Foods, Seed Balls, Terminator Seeds, Codex Elementarius, Agenda 21, Chip Implants, Ancient Aliens, Anunnaki, Hidden Nukes, Micro Nukes, Body Micro Nukes, Underwater Pyramids, Foreign Troop Builders, Martial Law, Project Blue Beam, UFOs Around the Sun, Hybridized Humans, Akhenaton Hieroglyphs, Pyramid Shaped UFOs, Super Soldiers, Nanotech, Financial Collapse, International Monetary Fund, Supercurrency, Disclosure Secrecy, Zachariah Sitchin, Corruption of the Human Genome, Perfect, Perfectly Possessed Human, Shape Shifting Reptilians, Vibrational Shifts, Mainstream Media UFO Reports, CERN Accelerator, God Particle, Effects of a Rogue Planet, Any Matter Accumulator, Stargates, Wormholes, Spirals, Asteroids, Comets, Cosmic Disturbances, UFO Wars in the Earth's Atmosphere, Suns, Heliosphere, Neutrinos, Earth's Core, Earth's Magnetosphere, Third Generation Night Vision Goggles, Earth Wobbles, Elliptic Orbit, Eccentricity of the Moon, Alien Maces, Energy Orbs, Strange Sounds, Sky Trumpets, UFO FBI Documents Released, Economical Religious Initiatives, Pole Shifts, 5013C Government Church Controls, Pleiadian Cosmic Visitations, Global Seismic Indicators, Rise of the New Age Police, Indigo Children, Star Children, Kundalini Spirits, Personal Angels, Energy Orbs, Gwen Towers, Light Workers, Galactic Federation of Lies, Financial Collapse, Third Seal, Media Front Loading, Alien Movies, UFOs, Prophetic Movies, Endless Distractions, Earthquakes, Volcanoes, Tornadoes, and Extended Winters, Animal Die-Offs, Pandemics, Manufactured Poisons, HIV, H7, and 9, Swine Flu, Ebola, Pineal Gland Destruction, Advanced Bioweapons Released, and Bizarre Chicken Behaviors on the Compound.
the, the limits of debate in this country are, 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 are established before the debate even begins, and everyone else is marginalized and made to seem either to be communist or well, some sort of disloyal person, a kook, there's a word, and now it's conspiracy. See, they've made that something that, that, is, that is, uh, sh should not be even entertained for a minute, that powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy buff. There's a big conspiracy. Pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, think about that. Imagine carrying that. Your that your Ecclesiastes one uh eighteen bag of uh fun includes Planet X, L and N, which turned out to be a flop. Now, I know some people are out there saying, nah, 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 nah. You know, now whether or not it was a guided craft of some type, I'd still say that's open for discussion. Um, uh, FEMA camps, FEMA coffins. I mean, come on, is that like old school stuff by now? I remember when I was just learning that FEMA coffins were actually patented as a cremation container for cadaver. I was like, what? I couldn't believe I read the patent. It was like designed to collapse in on the bodies that were thrown inside of it. And these things are stacked all over the United States of Babylon the Great right now in all the big uh, 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 cemeteries and stuff like that, the really big government you know, funded and stuff. But they were designed to collapse in. When, when they were pushed into an uh, incinerator, the, the plastics – you know, collapses in and it contains the fumes. Well, if you go back and you, if you know that the Illuminati and these creepy baby killing, blood drinking entities that are running the world, when you realize that they practice and that Nazi Germany and when you know that the top five death camps, when you map them out on Google Earth, right, and you draw lines between the top the uh, top five death camps of Nazi Germany, Treblinka, Auschwitz, all that. When, guess what you get? A pentagram. Guess what it looks like? The Pentagon. <laughs> I mean, it never ends. I mean, it's like a labyrinthine, you know, swirly, whirly ride of darkness that just doesn't have an end to it. It's amazing. Um, and, and the number one problem they had during Nazi Germany times, and oh, don't forget the swastika. Don't forget the swastika. You know what that is? That's a black sun. That's a black sun. What's a black sun? It's a brown dwarf. What's it referring to? Planet X. Why is that attachment that gives the Mount Graham Vatican Vat Telescope, the attachment why, that gives it the ability to see an infrared, why does it have the acronym Lucifer? Oh, I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Now, and it just, just it keeps going on and on. And, you know, the number one problem they had at the death camps and, and during Nazi Germany, was that the smell of the burning bodies was was flowing out into the the countryside, and and people were like, you know, it's waking people up. And and of course, when when the soldiers would go on their uh, vacation periods, I don't know what they called them, leave or whatever, uh, some of them broke down and and told you know what they saw. So it leaked out, you know. But but the smell of the burning bodies was the was the real problem that they had to contend with. Well, guess what? With FEMA coffins. They don't have to contend with it anymore. Of course, they're called, you know, under the patent, cremation container for cadaver. Who would create such a thing? And why in the world would you create it? Because <laughs> they know. You've got the FEMA trains, mass graves all over the country. That is not old news. Uh, I mean, that, I, that, I'm, actually, that is old news. That's been around for like, man, there was, oh my gosh, you know, go back like nine, ten years, and boy, there were just documentaries about that. The naked body scanners are kind of like, oh, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever. Uh, the guillotines across America, the, the FEMA trains have been seen with shackles inside of them at near you know, stationed across the country and all that kind of stuff. The, um, the whole thing about mind control slaves and SRA DID, I mean, boy, has that been around like forever. The Georgia Guidestones, forget about it. Um, the the uh, Imam Mahdi, a lot of people don't realize the whole Imam Mahdi, the whole 12th Imam thing with the, with the Islamic. You know, the, they actually believe that that's, you know, that entity is going to come from outer space or be affiliated with their brothers from outer space. 
<laughs> a lot of people don't realize that. You got to listen to some of the things that Farrakhan says. He gave it away. Operation Garden Plot, MK Ultra, uh, what happened with 9/11, Northcom being moved. You know, to actually have Posse Comitatus completely removed as as part of the laws of the United States and have government troops, government entities, government agencies on the on American soil for the sole purpose of being military on American soil. It's just unbelievable. Um, uh, you know, uh, it just goes on and on and on. Um, the, the whole global control grid, uh, you know, the presidential directives, 9 through 51. 51, wow. And NSD 51 for the continuity of government. The Almost the entire presidential directive was redacted, blacked out with a Sharpie. And nobody, not even anybody in Congress, got to look at it, which is supposed it has in it. I guarantee you it has... Put if the government is collapsed, if the government of the United States is collapsed, and the presidency and uh, the uh, succession list is killed, put the last president control. I guarantee you that's what's in it. <laughs> that probably has other evils, macabre things in it as well. But uh, but you can believe it that that whole uh, uh, you know um, uh, that whole TV series um, last you know the designated survivor was not a, an accident. <laughs> That's a fingerprint of God all over it. All right. Anyway, but you know all these things, harp, high active uh, active a rural research project. I mean, come on, man. You know that thing can shoot. It uses it uses the uh, properties that um, that. Uh, uh, that um, oh, daggone it! Um, that Tesla discovered with the ionosphere. Tesla discovered properties, in the, and supposedly he was meeting with an alien or some kind of an entity or otherworldly being, and that's how he found out the things that he found out. But and go and look up the Wardenclyffe Towers. You know the reason why the funding was pulled on the Wardenclyffe Towers, which would have allowed free energy, free electron AC power across the globe, simply by shooting high voltage. High voltage into the ionosphere and then pulling that power out of the ionosphere because the ionosphere breaks all the rules of physics. Okay, now when you inject power, power equals, let's say it equals E, and when it goes into the ionosphere, it comes out E times something. Okay, so it is actually amplified in the ionosphere. No, you say. Yes, I say. And and Tesla knew that. And that's why the, the black ops and everything swarmed in on all of his secrets and stuff as soon as he died. I mean, all this stuff was kept and buried. It was buried by the by the, the by the uh, the oil moguls that controlled the oil. That it was a part of the control grid. It's a part of the whole thing. Why is it that they made the northern shores of Alaska um, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sacred land, you know, Know, under the uh, uh, the um, uh, what do they call them the National Parks Act, so that they could do no digging, no no oil because there's billions of gallons of oil enough to sustain the earth for like forever uh, under the ground in northern Alaska. But they don't want anybody to know it. They want to have control over the available oil supplies. These things are how they do it. This is you know this is how they control. And then and that but it's okay because God is allowing these things to happen because He's bringing about look Akhenaten. And hieroglyphs. Why did why did Ob- why did Obama? Don't even get me going on Michael, his supposed wife. Please, okay. And 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 that whole looking like Akhenaten. And why did was he the only president that got taken down into the pyramid of Gia? And why did he say on a recorded program that oh, gee he looks like me? Well, you know why? Because it's a setup. Okay, he was born in the land of the Nubian pharaohs in Kenya. The Nubian pharaohs, it's all part of that whole worship that the Masonic Lodge has of the Egyptian dynasties and everything. And they're bringing back, they needed that bloodline, they needed that fit extension so that Lucifer could incarnate into him. This is not complicated, but you have to kind of, you know, drink the... uh, Let's put it this way. Drink the Ecclesiastes 118 Kool-Aid, and you have to wake up to these things. Super soldiers, pyramid-shaped UFOs, um, this, the Disclosure Project, uh, you know, um, uh, all these things, hybridized humans. What's that all about? The, the uh, you know, all, the underwater CERN accelerator stuff, the God particle, any matter accumulator, stargates, wormholes, asteroids, UFOs, wars in the Earth's atmosphere, third-generation night vision goggles, all this stuff. 
stuff, pole shifts, 5013C government church controls, Pleiadian cosmic visitations, all this stuff that's going on around there, light workers, energy orbs, personal angels. The New Age has infiltrated churchianity. And don't even get me going on Donald Trump. <laughs> Holy cow. That's a six-hour show right there. Pandemics. The, the experts that came forward on the Zika virus uh, claiming that it, it was their opinion as a geneticist and a genetic scientist and physicist that the Zika virus was manufactured in a lab. What about the people that have come forward about Ebola being a mag- manufactured in a lab? All these things. And then they blame it on a monkey. And some homosexuals on an airplane. Please. It's insulting to anybody that has an IQ above 100. I mean, praise Jesus. I just, I, oh, I just thank you, Father, for revealing these things to the, to the hearts and the minds of babes so that we can understand the depth of the darkness that is going on across the world and be prepared to some degree, albeit by shouldering that burden, but being prepared and understanding that all this other noise – that's happening across the world, or that, or that's happening especially in our individual countries. All this noise about Marcon and Trump visiting Marcon and walking down the streets and all the blah, 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 blah. It's blah. It's a bunch of blah. What's really important is to understand what Jesus warned us about at the Olivet Discourse and mapping it back to Revelation chapter 6. So we know where we are in the end times timeline. And then when you have the bits and the pieces of all these Bible mysteries that you can map back to the things that are happening today, everything falls together. And then you know beyond any shadow of a doubt that we have arrived. Praise his holy name. Now it's just hanging in there. But concerning the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a day to keep in the night. For when they say peace and safety, for when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them like labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they, the unrighteous, shall not escape. Volcanoes do not say peace and safety. Meteors and fireballs do not say peace and safety. Two suns in the sky do not say peace and safety. Crevasses sucking buildings and homes down into the pit do not say peace and safety. Sinkholes all over the world of various sizes do not say peace and safety. Animal kills by the tens of thousands, in some cases millions, do not say peace and safety. Dead persecuted Christians do not say peace and safety. Hurricanes and hurricanes, melting ice and disappearing glaciers, wars in Syria, bombings from Israel into Syria, the Ukraine and the Nance and the wars in Nigeria, deaths in Yemen and wars uh, and rumors of wars across the world do not say peace and safety. Outbreaks of Ebola, Zika, bubonic, bubonic plague and Marlburg across the world do not say peace and safety. Politicians say peace and safety. Mind control news says peace and safety. And those who are not wise as serpents follow. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Hosea 4, 6. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, you know, and uh, look at all the things that are happening across the world. I mean, people will say things like, you know, wow, you know, did you hear, you know, this, that, and the other thing is happening in the California and so-and-so's house and this is that. And, and, and oh, my gosh, this, this saint and this brother and is it bad things are happening. And, oh, my, my, my. You know, folks, it's going to become so bad. See, I, I, I wonder to myself, why do we feel drawn to pray? For some well-known Christian that's suffering for the first time maybe in their life, but not so drawn to pray for the 16-year-old Christian girl in Uganda who just had her arm cut off because she wouldn't renounce Jesus. See, I, I struggle with that. 
we are entering into a time right now where things are going to begin to accelerate. And God is going to be looking at our heart. He's going to be looking for biases. He's going to be looking for Trumpianity signs. There was a, uh, you know, Pastor Benjamin Faircloth put out something, I forget, uh, about, uh, a, a, you know, a, a, a billboard or something out, I, I guess. This is secondhand hand-me-down anecdotal information, but, it, but nevertheless, I'm just repeating it as best as I know how. Uh, but evidently there are billboards out there, you know, uh, you know uh, it, putting like scriptures like, you know, and he speaketh the word of God or something along that line and then quoting John and then putting a big picture of, of uh, you know, Donald Trump on the, on the billboard and an American flag on the left. Uh, again, Philippians 3.20 is king. Our citizenship is in heaven. God's going to be looking at all of our hearts. All of our hearts. And if there are biases in our hearts, I don't think that's going to fare well with him. Our hearts need to break for every person that is hurting. Especially the little people. Because the first will be last and the last will be first. A lot of these people we're forgetting to pray for will be answering to in the kingdom hierarchy. They'll be our bosses. But we don't think about those things, do we? I do. I spend a lot of time praying. for. I try really hard to control my mind and my heart and my thoughts. Hold every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Second Corinthians 10.5. To control my heart and my mind and to remember those who are never remembered. And to lift them up in prayer as they silently suffer under the pile of rock in Yemen. After a Saudi Arabian missile explodes over their home. Funded by the United States of Babylon the Great. Those are the ones who I try really hard to lift up in prayer. And pretty soon it's going to get so dark that everybody we know is going to be under rock or getting there or, or, or in the midst of a fire or being burned up by some nuclear cloud of uh, debris that is floating across from Chicago after it was leveled by a ground-based nuke. You know, it, it, who are you going to pray for then? There's going to come a time when no man can work, and we're going to be on our knees. It will be only – the, the only real meaningful prayers that are going to – I mean, all of them will have some meaning. I mean, all of them have meaning. Whenever a person's crying out to the Lord in repentance, I mean, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, all the angels in heaven will be singing. Hallelujah! Uh, but, 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 but the real powerful, super effectual prayers will be those of the remnant bride who is on her knees – praying for all of the peoples of the world that are going through the things. And we should be doing that now, never forgetting those who have been forgotten by Fox News, by MSNBC, by the BBC. Because Jesus hasn't forgotten them. And I pray that you don't forget them either. Because they bleed blood just like we all do. And they feel pain, just like we all do. And God so loved the world, the world, that he gave Jesus to the world. Praise his holy name. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. All right, and on that note, uh, let's go ahead and see about, wait a minute, I'm trying to, uh, re- oh, yeah, 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 I forgot. I, I, I got to make a mention of this or else I'll get in trouble. Miss M- M- Mary Leo, uh, send me nasty grams over messenger here. Hold on. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And for those of you who uh, would like to be a part of it, uh, especially if you know somebody who needs uh, deliverance or has, you know, an addiction to something or whatever, uh, this Tuesday night coming up, uh, which will be the 13th, um, from 8 to 10, we'll be uh, having the Divine Healing and uh, Deliverance Program with Pastor Aaron Wagner. Again, from 8 o'clock till 10 o'clock, it is a call-in show, and the call-in number is, for those of you who do not know it, it's 319-527-6020. Again, 319 319- 
six zero two zero. Call it, call it eight. Listen to a little bit of preaching from Pastor Aaron, uh, and uh, you know, and we'll answer the calls in the order that they're received, and then we'll bring you on live. And uh, and boy, a lot of people are receiving healings. A lot of people are getting delivered. They have been for a long time. Praise God and thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity to be able to continue to serve you as we are waiting. For the awesome transformation of our bodies, praise God to be able to hopefully pray always to be found worthy to stand, to escape all these things that are about to come upon the earth and stand before the Son of Man. Hallelujah. Luke twenty one thirty six. Glory be to God. Take nothing for granted and stay on your knees with a humble and contrite spirit and seek the Lord and repent continuously, confessing of even the sins that you do not even know. Ask the Lord to reveal them before you so that we can be as clean as we can possibly be, completely purified by the glorious fire of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, and on that note, let's go ahead. And uh, I'm looking at the time. Yeah, we got time for the kids. Hey, kids. All right, praise God. All right, let me see here. I got a, for this, yeah, I got a, okay, these, I haven't even looked at these. All right, these just came in. All right, these just came in. Kids, do you like brand new jokes hot off the press? <laughs> All right. Okay, let's. Uh, fortunately, I trust this brother because otherwise I'd be like having to, I'd have to, you know, police him first. All right, uh, so let's just go ahead and fly off. The, okay, fly by the seat of our pants. What rock group has four men but doesn't sing? What rock group, kids, has four men but doesn't sing? Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Kids, Mount Rushmore, they don't sing, right? Okay. All right, there we go. All right, I knew you would like that one. All right, cool. All right, all right, all right, okay. Kids, what type of salad did they serve on, uh, 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 oh, my goodness, I, I can't make out this word. Um, oh, what kind of salad did they serve on the Titanic? What kind of salad did they serve on the Titanic, kids? Come on. All right. Think about it. What kind of salad? It wasn't a garden salad. It was an iceberg salad. <laughs> kids, what do you think? Was that anything? Well, yeah. Okay. Whew. Uh, you know, you guys, sometimes you're a tough crowd. All right, kids. kids why is Superman's costume so bright? Hmm? Uh, why is Superman's costume so bright? I hope I'm, I'm reading this properly. Uh, because, um, okay, hold on a second. Or, um, oh, I'm having a little bit of a hard time making this out. i got to zoom in. Oh, okay. All right. Um, oh. Sorry. I read this wrong. Kids, kids, I read it wrong. Okay, reset your little minds. Reset your little minds. Why is Superman's costume so tight? Why is Superman's costume so tight? Hmm? Because he wore a size S, you know, as in Superman. Kids, what do you think about that? <laughs> no? You didn't like that one? Okay, well, that's all right. We can't hit, hit the ball out of the park every single time. And on that note, let's go ahead and go into the news. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? It's not normal. It's just wrong. Uh, it's not normal. <laughs> Game over. Man rams into shopping mall in Romania, uh, and it's just the, the insane stuff that is happening. See, this is what we're losing sight of, and not everybody's losing sight of it. I've even seen some stuff on the mainstream media news where they were reviewing some of the shootings and things that have been happening just in the United States of Babylon the Great. Forget about the other countries. It is overwhelming, but – it's continuing, and it's continuing just like the prophecy said it would. Now, birth pangs can go into a law period. We talked about that. Birth pangs can go into a law period and then come back up and hit even harder and faster, harder and faster, harder and faster, harder and faster. Okay, but 
Right now, they seem to be hitting pretty hard from all different directions. Man rams into shopping mall in Romania. Over seven people in, injured. Uh, and, uh, and it goes, uh, the Brala uh, co- County Police spokeswoman, Laura Dan, stated that the suspect had stabbed another man following a quarrel over a car deal. Uh, and then runs into seven people and, and kills them. All right, praise God. Um, uh, and, or injures them. Praise Jesus. Listen to this. Brutal, deadly knife crime epidemic has London in grip of fear more than 39,000. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, kids, did you hear that? Yeah. Yes, I, I know, I know. 39,000 knife attacks in just six months. Homicide increase by 25%. Wow. Unbelievable. Listen to this headline. Nine dead, 35 missing is a toll. Uh, and it's more than this. It's actually up to 25 dead now from the fires in California. And they've got three, the Hill Fire, the Woolsey Fire, and the Camp Fire. And the Camp Fire, by the way, they're saying is the most deadly and the most damaging, destructive fire in all of California's history. And that's saying a lot. All right, praise Jesus. But listen to this. 250,000 people evacuated from uh, Malibu as three wildfires ravaged California all at the same time. And this is unbelievable. I mean, this is just amazing uh, and, uh, you know, and very apocalyptic. And some people are even pointing, pointing to some scriptures in the Bible and saying, could this be? Could this be this scripture right here? Uh, and you know what? Who knows? We don't know. We're going to have to wait until we get up to the marriage supper and Jesus starts tossing Andy's candies uh, around to everybody. You got that one right here? Some Andy's candies for you. I know he's going to be doing it. I just know it. Wouldn't it be cool if we got there and, 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 you know, and then I'm sitting in the back, you know, bawling like a baby because I can't believe I actually made it wearing my Hawaiian shirt. And then all of a sudden Jesus says, and here's some Andy's candies. I, you know, if that happens, I'm going to flip out. That'll be just too funny. Right, kids? <laughs> yeah. All right. Listen to this headline. Hallelujah. President Donald Trump blames fires on poor forestry management with more than 130 million dead trees in California. He has a point. Now, now here's the thing. I don't like to defend Trump because I don't really like the man. However, I will say this. Anybody who understands forestry management understands that in order to stop brush fires from overtaking humongous you know, hundreds of thousands of acres of land and wiping out major parts of the state, there have to be fire breaks built. There has to be brush that is cleared and controlled burns and all that kind of stuff. I get all that. However, comma, watch out. Because anybody who doesn't realize that the states in this country have been nearly in bankruptcy now for a long, long time and then would blame a deadly fire on poor management and threaten to take away funding while they're suffering and burning? I mean, are you kidding me? But of course, you know, he was chosen by Jesus. And Jesus has that kind of a heart, right? No, that would be wrong. That would be wrong again, and wrong again, and wrong again, and wrong again, and wrong again. That's what I'm saying. Hey, wake up! Praise God. All right, next headline. California fire tragically destroyed entire town of paradise, described as a vision of hell, Armageddon. You know what, folks? What's really weird is it kind of is. And there are – I've even seen headlines on the news where people are praying for the first time probably in years, maybe even their whole lives. This is exactly how it works. There is no such thing as an atheist in a foxhole. All right, praise God. Look at this message from Autistic Child in Jerusalem. The Messiah is about to be revealed. This is from – Adam Eliyahu Berkowitz uh, uh, from today. Uh, And it it says, uh, a new message from an autistic man in Jerusalem said to be gifted with the power of prophecy warns that the difficult times preceding Messiah are very near while explaining that the preparations may not be what you think. You don't say. (laughs) By the way, that matches the testimony of uh, Rabbi Rami Levy and uh, that young boy, the 15-year-old boy, he's probably like 18 by now, uh, Nathan, uh, Nathan, N-A-T-A-N, and how he said that it's somebody that you know. The Messiah is somebody that you know, and you won't believe who he is. Yeah, he warned him. 
somebody that you know. Wow. <laughs> Until they find out. Listen to this headline. The United States hopes Russia will allow Israel to bomb Iranian forces in Syria. The United States is seeking to push all foreign military forces from Syria. The United States ambassador to the country said, besides Russian ones, of course. Praise God. Listen to this. Yemen death toll five times higher than previous estimates, according to researchers. At least 56,000 people have been killed in armed violence in Yemen since 2016. Independent research group signed. Never mind the other people that would died from cholera and side effects and poisoning and all the other things that are happening. This is just talking about the ones that have died uh, from the direct armed, uh, you know, violence and the shootings and the bombs and things. What about all the rest of them? I mean, the situation over there is unbelievable. And it's not, it's not just there. It's other parts of the world, too. Unreal. The, de- the death, the devastation, the de- destruction, the apocalyptic things that are happening across the world, the things that Jesus warned us about are all in full swing right now. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my gosh. I mean, it, it's really exciting to be alive right now. We need to be on our knees praying for angels, God's heaven, heaven's angels, heaven's powers, heaven's resources to come down upon this earth to launch an offensive against the forces of darkness and the principalities and the powers and to send angels into the camps of these people and bring them to the foot of the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Gunman kills 12, including deputy in a crowded California bar. And, and these things are just happening kind of behind the, behind the scenes. Uh, the, and it's, it's, it's on a global level. we still got to go into the signs in the sun and the moon and the star seas roaring. There's unbelievable reports in there. Listen to this headline. This is from France 24. Anti-Semitic acts are up 69% in France in 2018, Prime Minister says. 69%? Wow. Unbelievable. Listen to this headline. This is from CBS uh, Channel 6. Man wearing I love Jesus hat breaks into Chesterfield Church and rips Bibles apart and breaks glass and does all kinds of creepy weird stuff. Um, roundabout, when, uh, you know, and some are blaming it on that they were using it as a polling center and blah, blah, blah. But the whole I love Jesus vandalizing the church and all that weirdness, this is all part of that whole setup. It, there's a big setup taking place behind the scenes. To get get the the peoples of this country that don't know any better, which is the majority of them, including church, uh, including churchianity, uh, especially Trumpianity, uh, 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 you know, prepared for the persecution of the Christians. Okay, and this this statement by Obama on MSNBC is exactly that: preparing people for the persecution of the Christians. Listen to what he says: the antidote. To a government controlled by a powerful few, a government that divides, is a government by the organized, energized, inclusive many. That's what this moment's about. He's talking about Christians. That has to be the answer. You cannot sit back and wait for a savior. You can't opt out because you don't feel sufficiently inspired by this or that particular candidate. This is not a rock concert. This is not Coachella. (laughs) We don't need a messiah. All we need are decent, honest, hardworking people who are accountable and who have America's best interests at heart. I think that says it all. <laughs> I put that one right on the soundboard because I think we're going to be calling that one up over and over and over again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's the end of the world as we know it. It's the end of the world. Hey, I wonder if I'm in copyright infringement for singing that song. <laughs> ah! All right, hallelujah. Google admits in court documents that it believes free speech is a disastrous for society. Folks, in court. <laughs> Can you imagine that? You know what's funny is that the same ones like the Google goblins who are out there saying things like that, as long as it's what they want to say, it's okay. (laughs) How about we take away everything that Google has to say and all of their proponents and Facebook and all these other places where, you know, the darkness is hanging out. 
with a little bit of light shining through. Praise Jesus. Why is Chile flying uh, migrants back home? Chile returned a plane load of immigrants to their native country on Wednesday in the first of a series of humanitarian flights criticized by migrant groups as forced deportations. Or maybe they're rescuing them from, you know, the uh, militiamen of uh, Babylon the Great who are just itching to take their their AR-15s and shoot people. Because that's exactly what's happening down there as they're laying their circumteen wire to protect us. No, they're laying the circumteen wire to keep the people in the country. Because when they set the nuclear bombs off in America, they don't want us escaping. Why? Because per capita, there are more professed Christians in this country than any other country in the world. So where would Satan want to contain the most people, so he could kill them, murder them, decapitate them, torture them. That circumteam wire and those fences, it's not to keep the Hondurans out. 14,000 Hondurans is two, two rows in the Tampa Bay Buccaneer Stadium. I said that before. It's a fact. It's nothing. But look at all the presents, kitten, so that they can erect circumteam wire fences to keep the innocent people of this country, not innocent in Christ's eyes, but essentially, here for the apocalypse, for the Georgia Guidestones event. Hmm? Taiwan Navy commissions two United States made warships amidst tensions with uh, China and the China Seas. They're commissioning United States made warships at this time. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, it is getting, I mean, it is ramping up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. All right. And the next one, North Korea. Really angry as U.S. tensions are on the rise. Again, it says North Korea is getting increasingly angry at the United States as talks are uh, 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 deadlocked. In tensions between the two countries are on the rise, a source familiar with the discussions told CNN. Okay, well, we shall see. And now we go into as in the days of Noah. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Rocket light, rocket like UFO shoots out of the sun during a solar explosion on November eighth, twenty eighteen. Video included, and indeed they do have a video, and they are back at it again. The Soho watchers are capturing all kinds of, well, what are they? We know what they are, don't we? Yeah. Oh, if you don't. You got a game of catch up to play. All right, praise Jesus. You can start with Peterson Chronicles number one, and then number two, and number three, and number four. I think we're on 262 or something like that now. I don't know. All right, um, unidentified deadly creature on the loose in Kentucky. Something something is prowling around in rural Kentucky. Something dangerous. Back in September, a spate of mysterious animal killing sent law enforcement to search to find whatever could have ripped up in the throats of three miniature horses. Yada yada yada. On and on and on it goes in Monroe County, Kentucky, and is, you know it's a whole chupa copper creepy weirdness happening again and again and again and again and it's all over the world all right have, listen to this billionaire yuri milner's breakthrough initiatives eyes private mission seek to seek alien life okay and it's like alien life dude just go to the white house for crying out loud i mean please all right, anyway, uh, hallelujah thank you jesus okay and underneath the pestilence and famine section of the news Lead poisoning. Water supply in most Chicago houses is contaminated. Lead was found in nearly 70% of the water samples collected by the leading local newspapers. Uh, and it just goes on and on. It's <laughs> All right, praise God. And now, signs in the sun and the moon and the star seas roaring. Praise Jesus. All right, last volcano to have exploded in Canada, Mount Meager in uh, Meager, uh, in British Columbia, is cracking and collapsing and potentially threatening the safety of people who live in the region. And it goes on to say, this is spectacular. And it gives you, you know, a whistleblower in the British Columbia and this and the other thing. And they're looking at it and watching it, the geologist. And they, it's, it's going to – there's volcanoes going off all over the world. Yeah, there are record-setting volcanoes. It's because, because the – core of the earth is slowing down the heliosphere of the sun has been interrupted by planet x and the solar system that is moving through ours right now yeah read the iorio paper by the 
astrophysicist Iorio, printed by uh, published by um, um, Columbia University, Cambridge University, I forget. But anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, talks about you know uh, on the eccentricity of the moon and why the moon is no longer in a round orbit around Earth. Yeah, yeah, they know, they know. All right, praise Jesus, hallelujah. Biggest deluge in decades closes ancient city of Petra, or Petra, uh, Jordan, after Dead Sea flooding kills 21 Jordanians two weeks ago. Oh, no, it's that secret place that they're supposed to take the bride of Jesus Christ to hide out. No, that was made up by theologians. Is it going to happen? No, 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 Petra. Oh. Where did they come up with this stuff? Okay, uh, 9-11 wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, Pakistan killed 500,000 people. Brown University study. Shocking new study produced by Brown University finds that between 480,000 and 507,000 people were killed during America's post-9-11 war on terror. Did you know that according to a Satanist who was uh, turned to Christianity, who met with John Melindy uh, and used to work with Satan in the spiritual realm with the demons astral projecting and coming against the prayers of the saints, he said that the wars on the earth were a feeding ground to give power to the demons, the bloodletting. Hmm. 507,000 people killed post-9-11. You know, makes you think. Brazil landslide, at least 10 dead in Rio de Janeiro's uh, nite, uh, nite, n- n- no, N-I-T-E-R-O-I, Niteroi. I don't know. At least four people are still missing after torrential rains caused a deadly mudslide in Rio de Janeiro. This kind of stuff is happening all over the world. Listen to this. In Russia's village swallowed by land, life's a beach. No, uh, just not in a good way. Shoina, a fishing village in the frigid far north, is slowly vanishing under dunes that engulf entire homes. For children, home is now a giant sandbox. Adults have to say goodbye to my high, to my high heels. And it, it's, you know, it's quipping a little bit, but in Shoina, Russia, Russia, things are getting pretty. This is this kind of stuff is happening. We reported on the last headline about the, the about the island that's been for you know, thousands of years, a high island off the coast of Japan, and it's disappearing because of the rising seas. All these kinds of things. Don't even get me going on the Larson B. I self. Don't even get me going on the day after tomorrow and how those things have already come to pass and how prophetic that movie was. It's all happening right now. Unbelievable. Thank you, Jesus. Crimson skies, huge dust storm storms hit Australia town. Everybody knows that Australian nature can be really harsh and dangerous, but it is also beautiful, even the most perilous of moments. Of course, it looks like the end of the world, says in this headline, but definitely a solemn reckoning. And it's talking about a dust storm, a dust storm that looks very red in the sky, turning the skies red like blood uh, nearby New South Wales, engulfing several towns. <clears throat> Praise God. Listen to this. Watch. Shocking moment as Earth swallows up part of Israeli highway. A part of Route 90 highway near the Dead Sea has been washed out by mud flows, leaving four people blocked and stranded, according to the Times of Israel. And you should see this. This is an amazing thing to see in the videos. But it's happening all over the world. These kinds of uh, fissures and cracks and crevasses sucking towns into the pit. It's the kind of stuff is happening everywhere. It is Continuous now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen to this headline. Thousands of goats and sheep and cattle dying from sudden temperature changes in, in Taita, Taveta County, Kenya. Kenya? Yes, Kenya. It's happening all over the world, folks. You just pick a geographic area across the world. Look at the things that Jesus warned about. Pestilence, famine, wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places. It's unbelievable. And all these things are happening right now. Was this headline? A shallow, powerful magnitude 6.8. And that's a powerful one, by the way. 119 kilometers northwest of Alankinbien, Svalbard in Janmayen. This is up there by Svalbard. Anything that's nearby Greenland, it starts to get into that Greenlander, you know, where they put like 17 different consonants together and they expect you to be able to pronounce it. I don't know how anybody speaks that language. I mean, Chinese, Mandarin's got to be easier than that. I don't know. But anyway, it just kind of fries my mind. But anyway, um, with 400 people dead or missing in June, one of the most powerful eruptions in recorded history, Guatemala's. Wago volcano blows again. I mean, uh, it's just all over the world. It's all over the world. And now we have a special treat. Praise Jesus. Let me go ahead and look at the uh, call doc there. I'm checking the numbers, checking the numbers. Um, hmm. Now, one of them, 
Hmm. I definitely recognize Dr. Joy's. Let me see if I can. Oh, I see. Brother Zen called in using Skype. See, he's 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 a smart guy. Uh, he yeah. Okay, I figured it out. I think. All right. Now praise Jesus. <laughs> Let's hope, you know, let's hope it's not somebody from Svalbard going, oh, my gosh, it's cold up here, and all kinds of colloquialisms and, uh, you know, four-letter four letter words. But anyway, praise Jesus. Let's go ahead and bring them live on the show. This uh, may be the first time this has ever happened. I don't know. But um, very exciting to have two well-known authors who both understand the concept of Lucifer, father of Cain, on this program, or any program for that matter. And I know that Zen has done some together with Joy in the past on this subject as well. But also to be able to allow them to expand on some of the concepts that are brought forward in Arm- uh, you know, Eden to Armageddon series with Dr. Joy. So what a blessing it is to have them tonight. Praise Jesus. Let's bring them live. God. Brother Zen, Dr. Joy, are you there? I am. I'm here. Hey, Zen. Awesome. Hey, isn't it cool to have you guys both on the same program? It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, what a blessing. <laughs> I, I agree. This is. I've been so excited about this possibility of all three of us being together. This will be a wonderful time tonight. I cannot wait to talk about the things we're going to get into. I think your listeners are going to really love all this. Yeah, you know, I thought it would be kind of cool to just dive into the highly controversial um, concepts of Lucifer, father of Cain, and the, the significance of that mysterious discovery uh, as it changes that that deer in the headlights look that you would have to suffer from when an unbeliever asks the ominous question, does all of mankind have to suffer because a woman ate an apple? You know, I really have a problem, right? And so it's really is like the, it's the quintessential icebreaker for all Biblical mysteries, praise God. So I'm just going to let you guys go ahead and 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 fight over the mic yourselves, and I'll kind of take a back seat. But I'd love to see how you were both led to the same discernment in your research, and and what you believe the ramifications are, and the significance significance of this is, or, and what actually really happened. You know, what is your take on it? Your interpretation of this kind of your um, I, I don't know how to uh, put this exactly, but what does your sanctified imagination tell you? Like Likely happened in the midst of this whole, I don't know, Lucifer, father of Cain, fraternal twins dynamic. What really happened there? Uh, I think I'll just go ahead and turn it over. Uh, and, I'll, and, and ladies first, uh, Sister Joy, go ahead. Uh, listen, uh, I, uh, this has been something that was a real eye opener for me. I come at this from a total biblical back. Standpoint. In other words, I'm not going outside anything but scripture from the King James Version. And when I came across this as a possibility, it was shocking to me because I had never, ever heard anything about the possibility of a serpent or snake having a sexual encounter with uh, a human being. And so when that revelation happened to me, sitting at my dining room table doing the research in the book of Genesis. It was literally, um, it, it set me back. I mean, I sat back in the seat and tears just, just started flowing out of my eyes. And I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I have found something that I've never heard anybody talk about. So uh, it, it was a real eye-opener for me. And then, of course, when uh, Zen and I had been friends, and we had, we've come at this at a total different angle, and we literally saw the same thing. So uh, it's been wonderful to have someone like Zen who is so familiar with all the other extra biblical kinds of texts to really support what I'm trying to show from the King James Version that literally it's telling us in Scripture 
But the problem is we were all brought up, you know, with the little bedtime story of what happened with the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve standing under a tree with a snake, and he had his tail wrapped around an apple, handing it to her, and she's taking a bite out of it. And most of us never, ever questioned that. We took it as biblical truth, that there was nothing more to it than that. And I was, just, I was as guilty as everybody that's probably listened to this show. And if you've never heard this concept, you're going to be just, you're going to be, re- your eyes are going to be open. Because once you get the, the meat of what really happened, it opens up the entire Bible from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Don't you think, Zen? Most certainly. And I do agree with you, Dr. Joy, and, and you, John, um, that this is, one of the most important riddles that is veiled everywhere within the scripture. And it's because people are not taught the true understanding of what happened in the garden, that they are highly and vehemently opposed to this information and also unwilling to overcome their indoctrination to embrace it as possibility. And because of that, Scripture remains locked and hidden from them because this is a skeleton key for unlocking so many of the passages and so many of the themes, like the enmity between the seed line, connections to the parable of the wheat and the tares, the kingdom, the the sower, everything that is revealed in Matthew 13, uh, Cain being of the wicked one, the Pharisees being of ye are of your father, the devil, the murderers of the prophets from Abel to Zacharias. All these different things are dependent upon this particular knowledge. Even the fact that the patriarchs, the prophets, and the apostles spent so much and dedicated so much time to covering who begot whom and who was born of whom with regard to the lineages and why Cain, his generations are separated in Genesis chapter 4 from Adam's in Genesis chapter 5. And that being the origin between the enmity, which has been all throughout time and history, waged between the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. One yes, of the think, things um, I'm I'm Go sorry ahead, I'm sorry to jump in, but I I got to share something that I think is just so cool, and 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 one thing we cannot end this show without getting a list of the King James version scriptures that that uh, that you have, um, Doctor Joy, because that that I think is a is a real key to shifting folks over to being able to say, wait a minute, there's something more, you know, that kind of thing, because a lot of people tend to be very resistant to, you know, somebody says, well, but if you look at the Aramaic Targums, well, there's a lot of people that are so hugging their King James that the idea of looking at anything other than King James is heretical, right? But anyway, um, right. Uh, but I've got to share this with you guys. I think you're going to totally dig this. Now, this, this program has been scheduled for a pretty long time, a pretty darn long time, many, many weeks. And you might say, well, so what? Well, I just realized that, you know, today's date is 11 mm-hmm. And I'm going to read to you this. Now, now, many of you out there probably know by now that many Christians since 2011 and even before, but mainly 2011 is when it really started, st- have been getting these confirmations from the Lord. They've been seeing 1111s, and, and it almost comes like God is sort of handshaking us, you know, letting us know you're doing the right thing. I mean, there have been times when I felt that I was not right with the Lord and I repented and cried out to him. And literally I would get back on my prayer chair that morning. I'm in the dark. I'm on my knees. I'm praying to the Lord. And I would sit back on my prayer chair, open my phone up and right there on my lock screen, the, t- the time would be 11, 11. 
And I would be like, Lord, how awesome. And in the book by, J, uh, by Stephen Brooks, How to Operate in the Gifts of the Holy Spirit, it actually says, and I'm quoting right now, when we search out a matter that is a spiritual mystery to us, the, he was on, a, 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 you know, um, oh gosh, what's the name of um, It's Supernatural, you know, that show. And uh, uh, it says, when we search out a matter that is a spiritual mystery to us, we must rely on the Holy Spirit to unravel or untie the full message that has been sent. For years, I'm quoting from his book, for years, I used to see the numbers 1111, 11-11, on a continual basis to a point where it seemed like it was being supernaturally impressed before me. Whenever random, uh, whenever uh, randomly happened to look at the clock, it would say 1111. And over time, the Holy Spirit explained to me that he was using this particular set of numbers to confirm to me that I was walking in his plan for my life and that all was well. And those numbers would pop up at the most unexpected places and bring an outward confirmation to an inward leading that I felt was of the Lord. This guy was on uh, Sid Roth at Supernatural, Stephen Brooks, How to Operate in the Gifts of the Holy Spirit. And I, I had already been telling people about the whole 11-11 phenomenon for years and years and years on a radio show before I read this in his book, and I just about fell off my chair, and now I look at the date, and it's 11-11. Dr. Joy? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, I don't don't think that there's anything here that's happening on Earth that is a coincidence. Uh, And I've had to, you know, get a real grip of that, and I think that uh, that's something that we were brought up with to believe that, oh, we were lucky or, oh, that just kind of happened, or that's just a coincidence. The more that I've lived and researched and been around the truth of the matter of what God is trying to, been trying to specifically tell us is that everything has a rhyme and reason, and everything that is happening here, his hand is upon it. I mean, you have to really stop and say and look at the truth. He is called the Alpha and Omega, so he is the beginning and the end. And he knows everything in between. And, you know, I've really tried to show in my research how he's a great conductor. And we are literally singing as a part of all that. He knows everything about us. And it tells us. He knows the hairs, the numbers of hairs on your head. We're talking about something that is a huge capability. I mean, we can do a lot of things similar to this kind of thing on computers. So if you think about who designed us to make a computer and how much more greater his magnificent capability is, then it stands to reason that everything is kind of set on a course. Now, in that course, we have freedom of choice. And a lot of people get really mad and they'll say, oh, I don't understand how a good God, loving God, could send anybody to hell. Well, in essence, you kind of send your own self to hell. You choose to pull away from him, and that's where you end up because that's what he's telling you. If you don't want to be a part of me, you don't want to follow what I have told you you need to do, then there is another option for you, and that's so it's what you're going to choose. So in essence, even though there is a judgment, it's because you've made the choice. Um, and so the same thing happens with anything that's inside of you know, this uh, matrix in which we are existing And we are a physical realm inside of a spiritual realm. It's all around us. It's just that we cannot see it because our eyes can only behold certain wavelengths in light. And everything else around us is in another wavelength. I mean, you have radio waves, you have gamma waves, you have all these other waves that we know exist, but yet our eyes can't behold but certain wavelengths of light. So, you know, we think about what the Bible says about Elijah and Elisha and what they saw and these huge armies and they're all around us. I mean, all of this is being played out and it's, and it's really real. So when we start talking about what happens in the Garden of Eden and how it goes all the way up until the day of, you know, his second coming and return and, and then the great you know, throne of judgment, you have to really know that he's given us a book. He's told us exactly what's going to happen, and um, things like you just mentioned prove that. It proves that there's just a connection between us and the Creator that's a lot more than people really, really want to stop and, and, uh, and take to heart, but it's real. 
and it should make you really open your eyes to what's going on. Don't oh, hey, man, Zen. Absolutely. Yeah, and Zen, I wanted to ask you, what, at what point in time in your research did you have that aha moment on the whole, you know, Cain deal? Well, when I began to rededicate, well, I rededicated my life to the study of the scriptures, and I decided to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and in just doing that, um, and I had also been a student of the extra biblical manuscripts, but uh, reading Genesis for the first time thoroughly in a manner that I never had previously, it was so obvious to me. And then being um, a person that likes to examine the original context of the words that are utilized in the Hebrew and also in the Greek and the New Testament for the conveyance of whatever it is that the Most High is trying to reveal through the prophets, through the scriptures, through the gospel, it became obvious. I mean, I did not understand how other people were not led to this discernment. And so I began to speak out and to question and to ask uh, others about these kind of things. And when I didn't know of other people that were also being led in similarity to this discernment, that's when I decided to write my book, uh, Lucifer, Father of Cain. And it was after that that uh, Paul, a guy named um, Paul, contacted me and told me about Dr. Joy's work and that she had been on um, Daniel Ott's show and that she had mentioned in her interview that she believed that Cain also was a uh, the firstborn son of the devil. And so I listened to that interview, and then it was after that that I contacted Dr. Joy, and we have since that time been confirming witness for one another and in different manner um, coming to this particular knowledge. But, of course, my truth is always based on the foundation of the King James version of the Bible and that what I study in the extra biblical manuscripts was only confirming and bringing to clarity the things that were revealed to me within the canonical materials and studying the, the Hebrew word, even for um, the, the words for touch and eat uh, the euphemisms and the context uh, of to lie with a woman, um, to indulge sexually in pleasure, um, and even fruit and seed, they have in association, the definitions are related to children, progeny, descendants, the word beguiled, uh, wholly seduced. I mean, all of these things, and then looking at the punishments that were laid upon the serpent with, I'm going to put enmity between your seed and her seed, um, between your children and, and her children, and then, which is what the Targum says, um, specifically it mentions thy son and her son as well as the seed. And then the fact that now, Eve, because she had eaten from this fruit, this tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that all of a sudden she would have sorrowful childbearing laid upon her as punishment for having eaten that. And the fact that when you read through Genesis in Genesis chapter 2, verse 28, they were naked and not ashamed, and then they eat from this fruit of the tree of the knowledge, good and evil. And then all of a sudden they're covering their genitals and then they are hiding from the most high God um, because they are embarrassed at 
what they had done. And in my opinion, what God was revealing in Genesis 3:15, 16, and 17 was the fact that he knew that they had um, that Eve had been beguiled by the serpent and, and already impregnated with Cain. And that repeating the act with Adam, that she then um, was also pregnant with Abel, who was the firstborn son of Adam. And so Eve being the mother of all living, when she bore these two children, that's when the enmity, as prophesied, would take place and Cain would murder his half brother, and even the names. Looking at the names for Cain, uh, acquired and possession. Um, that to me indicates that he was Adam's stepson. And then when Seth is born, his name means replacement, compensation, substitution. It tells us in Jubilees in chapter four, verse seven, that. Uh, Seth was the second seed of Adam and Eve, whereas if Cain was truly Adam's child, it would indicate in that verse that Seth was the third seed, the third-born son of Adam. But it, it doesn't say that. It says that Seth is his second son, their second son together. And so... That also is verified in Luke chapter 3, where we see in the genealogy of Christ, and this is also confirmed in the book of the bee and the cave of the treasures, as they both of those texts have genealogy lists for Yeshua as well. And Cain is excluded from those particular genealogies. And again, it's my opinion, because he and his first ten generations are separated and found in Genesis chapter 4. And it's clear from the Targum that it, the reason being is because he is not Adam's son and they are of a different bloodline and lineage. And so all of these things made total sense to me. And then reading and studying also Dr. Joy's book um, I, and becoming really good friends over the years, uh, I knew it, that she also had been led to similar discernment only from studying the King James Version um, of the biblical narrative. And so I, I believe that the Most High brought us together um, as confirming witness for one another and from two different angles so that we could help others to expound upon what is clear in our minds with what is being revealed within the scriptures and now that we have been on the forefront of bringing this information forth many people now are um, coming to this understanding opening themselves to the possibility and embracing it scripture is making sense to them in a way that it had never had previously and so that is the blessing of the work that we've been doing together. That's awesome. Um, uh, Joy, I'm, I'm really curious coming in it from coming at it from a purely King James standpoint. What was your point of epiphany? Um, where did, when did you say, wait a minute, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I've been that where like your eyes were like going, you flipping out kind of thing. Cause you know, I, I remember, the first time I ever really got wind of it, I was, uh, it was, it seems like forever ago, but we had a, <laughs> uh, a bulletin board and some lady was participating in the bulletin board and had heard about it and, and I didn't know anything about it and she sends me an email, I was like a moderator on this board, uh, you know, this, this discussion board and um, she's like, she's in tears, she's like, oh, she's like, I just found out that Cain was, that Eve was essentially raped by Satan and and I, and I'm like what <laughs> you know, I'm like, really? <laughs> that and, uh, you know I was just like you know so what what was it that you saw that made you say hey 
Well, I think the, the first thing was that I did not realize that in Scripture, I, I was like, uh, uh, Zen, I decided to throw everything that I'd ever really had told to me and go back and read the Bible myself, to sit down yeah. myself and read it from start to finish and pay attention to every word. And I think that the thing that first uh, surprised me was that there was a male and female that was created outside of the garden. And that that was totally different. There was a replenishing of the earth. It meant there had been generations. And so I started seeing some strange things that I had not paid attention to. And then I got down in um, chapter 2 and realized that Adam and Eve were married. And there was a very important in that in that holy matrimony is very important. And once you understand holy matrimony, the fact that there's no such thing in God's eyes, that you don't need to be committing adultery, that you don't need to be mixing anything. I started paying attention that he was saying when he created something, he wanted it created, and it was supposed to create things after its kind. There was no mixing involved. And so when I got down to the Adam and Eve story there in the garden and realized that when God came uh, up on them, and they, like Zen said, they had hid themselves, and they covered themselves with fig leaves, and I started reading what the curse was, uh, where the Bible says, God told, uh, I will put into me, which is positive hatred, between these, talking about Satan, and the woman, and between thy seed, Satan, and her seed, Eve, and it shall bruise your head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And I'm like, where is Satan see that? Because it's specifically mm-hmm. saying there's going to be a big intimate empty between Eve's seed and Satan's seed. And all. I'm like, hmm. If you go back and you look all through the Bible, it, seed means a lineage. I mean, you can look at Strong's. You can look at uh, the concordances in the Bible. You're, when you talk about seeds, you're talking about a lineage. And I'm like, where is his lineage at? And why is it happening like this? And so then I started paying attention to what it was that God was saying to Eve and that her conception was going to be uh, painful and whatever. And I'm like, when when did they have sex? When did Adam and Eve have sex? And I started really like looking at it. And so then uh, I'm like, isn't it strange that if you ate an apple and God showed up, if you were eating off the fruit of the trees, and I began to see that the fruit of the trees were good for food, but these tree of, of knowledge and the tree of good and evil were in the midst of the garden, totally different. And we talk about the midst of stuff, I got to thinking about the burning bush, you know, that was burning, but yet it wasn't consumed, and that they were speaking from it. And I'm like, oh, my goodness then this being was not literally a snake because in Revelation it says he's a serpent and then you start looking up serpent and you find out that he was a beautiful being and you start finding out all this stuff that you didn't really put in your mind because you were trying to make him into like a snake that crawls around like a rattlesnake and that's not what he was. So I'm like, okay, this is a little strange. Uh, God is condemning Eve for eating an apple and in childbirth? Why would, you know, Mosaic law is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And so I was like, okay, if I ate something and my mother came in, let's say I was in the cookie jar, and she said, don't have anything before supper. And she came walking in, and I had that cookie in my mouth. Would I put my hands over my private part, or would I put my hand over my mouth? <laughs> and right then was when the lights went bing, 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 bing. <laughs> Something's wrong here. You know, and then I started looking. There is no such thing as an apple. It never says there is an apple in Genesis. And all this time growing up, I would have said that there was an apple, and and she ate it. So I'm sitting there at the table going, oh, my gosh, there's no apple. She has put fig stuff over her private parts, and so has Adam. And God is now condemning her in childbirth? So she's conceived. How could he be condemning her in childbirth 
if she hasn't conceived yet. So I just backed it up a little bit, and I'm saying, okay, it says she ate with that serpent, and then she turned and she gave to her husband, Adam, who was with her. And that was another thing I had not paid attention to. I had always seen it where, like, she was with the snake, and she was even eating the apple, and Adam was nowhere around. So it's like maybe she had to get the apples and run them back to the cave. And I'm like, okay, that's not the story here. We've got, a, we've got a serpent that apparently had a pretty good look about himself. He's in the midst of the tree. He's not the tree. He's not a snake like a rattlesnake. He is a serpent. And he's talking to her. He's intelligent. She's listening to him. And she eats with him. Okay, well, there's no apples. What did she eat with the serpent? So I'm like, okay, let's look up this word eat. And then I started looking in the Hebrew and found out eat meant sex. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. She had sex with a serpent, and then she turned around and had sex with Adam. Why? Because Adam was married to her earlier in chapter 2. And if you know anything about what God believes in adultery, oh, my goodness. I'm like, now they have got a mixed seed he is going to be delivering something that's not what God made, wanted, or desired for her to do. Because instead of staying with her mate, and Adam should have been, it says through Scripture, Adam was supposed to be the one like Jesus who loved the church and was willing to die for it. Well, he allowed, he was in Eve's presence, and he allowed her to partake and eat with that serpent. And to cover it up, because he knew he shouldn't have been doing that, he turned around and she gave to him, and he did this, hoping to cover it up. So immediately, I'm like, okay, this means that Eve had sex with the serpent, and then she turned around and she had sex with Adam. Now, Is there anything that can prove that happened? So first of all, like Zen mentioned, in the uh, King James Version, in the concordance, it shows us that Cain's name in Hebrew means acquired. Abel's name in Hebrew means breath. Well, again, if God created everything to be in its same likeness, then Adam had breath. Abel had, but Cain is saying he is acquired, and Eve is saying she got him from the Lord, and we know that Adam's not a Lord, so I'm like, okay, and I'm just about shaking about this (laughs) period of time because I'm like crying and going because it's just kind of becoming a revelation here, and I'm going, okay, now I've got to be able to prove this medically. Could a woman have sex, be married? Go out one night, find her a boyfriend, have sex on the side, and come home and have sex with her husband and end up delivering twins at the same time. But the first one she delivers would be the son of the boyfriend she met that night, and the second one delivered would be her husband's child. Well, sure enough. In the medical literature, I found something called heteropaternal superfunctionation. I can't hardly say that last word. But it means that the mother became pregnant while she was having relationships with her affair person and her husband, and that she gives birth to a child from the, the boyfriend, and then turns around when she delivers, she has a son from the father. It's very rare in the medical field, but it occurs when a woman produces two eggs and has sex with two partners while she's ovulating. So don't you think it's quite interesting that Satan was pulling Eve over and saying, oh, come up here, there's nothing wrong with me. You know, God, is he really, did he really say, did he really mean that you would die? I mean, he was taunting her at the right time. And, and she ate with him. It says she ate with him. 
So when you look at what that eight means in that context of that scripture, she had six with the serpent. And she turned around and had six with Adam. And she delivered Cain first which was the son of Satan, which the Bible tells us clearly is because he's not in the lineage of Adam. And she has Abel, whose name means breath, just like her husband. So that was my, uh, I guess, awakening, John, was that no longer could anybody tell me ever, ever that she did not have with that serpent. Now, I understand that a long time ago, sex was not something that the world talked about. And so I'm not sure that when the little Adam and Eve story got originated, that it wasn't done in a um, double speak language, which I, 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 you know, my research goes in like the Camelot and it's folklore and whatever. But there's a whole different meaning behind it when you know the truth of what the story really means. I don't know whether, you know, the people that first started using this uh, little tale about Adam and Eve were trying to say something happened and they tried to cover it up and make it simple without saying that there was a sexual relationship because let's just say sex was not a topic that even my parents talked about, okay? Today we see it everywhere. But when I was growing up as a child, there was no discussion about sex. You even you didn't even see a man and woman hold a kiss on TV. So, you know, I don't know whether it was it was started and and was tried to kind of maybe give an indication that something did happen and whatever. But what has happened is by not telling the truth that sex happened, then you don't understand why there's sweet and pears in the world. And why this lineage of Satan exists and this lineage through Adam and Eve is how Jesus had to come to save us, you know, from everything. So if you don't get, you know, it's kind of like you don't get the foundation. And the Bible tells us if you build your house on sand, it's going to fall apart. You better have it on that foundation so that you get the understanding from A to Z. And once you understand this, that the serpent had a seed line that still exists today that is in the world that's trying to bring God's people down and control us and take every soul that they can take from us, then you don't get why all this is happening and why Jesus had to be born and why his lineage had to be pure and why there was a flood. This explains the entire context of why God said no mixing, no adultery. He had it down to a science, be pure. And this explains why he was like he was, because he married Adam and Eve before it all happened, and when they did what they did, they presented a seed line that was never supposed to be on this earth. Wow, that is amazing. Um, you know, uh, I just, you know, listening to you speak, and, uh, you know, had this kind of an epiphany as you were going through the um, various um, elements of your discernment, and I, it was kind of like it never hit me before. Why in the world, if it was about, you know, an apple, for example, why in the world would all the punishments be – of a sexual connotation, exactly. pain in childbirth, pain in childbirth, the enmity of the seed. Why? It wouldn't make any sense. Why? I mean, for crying out loud, on the Dick Van Dyke show, when I was growing up, they were sleeping in separate beds, and God would be there, there right. you know, telling them, "You ate an apple, and I'm going to give you pain in childbirth." A thousand, you know, six thousand years ago, doesn't make sense. There's <laughs> something up well, there. Well, if you look, I mean, if you look got, at Genesis. 4.16, like you're talking about, it says, Unto the woman, God said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. If they ate an apple, and if God is true to what he says in, in Mosaic law, an eye for an eye, in other words, if you did this, 
you took out somebody's eye, we take your eye. In other words, if they ate an apple, he should have done something to their mouth or to their teeth or to their tongue if he was following what he believed. So it tells us that when he condemned her in, in, in childbirth and in conception and that there would be children, that means she had already conceived when he gave that curse upon her. Yes, it was prophetic. It was prophetic. So You're right. So then let me ask you this question. So when I think about the enmity, the concept of enmity of the seed, and I look at, you know, well, we'll just call him the devil or Satan uh, in, in the capacity of, you know, a, uh, a being of a God, a minor godly little g god stature. Um, ultimately copulating with a uh, human-esque woman, uh, or human woman in this case, you know, I would submit, potentially, because um, we don't know the, the, all the nuances and dynamics of the entire garden story, exactly how they went down. You know, Zen knows more about it than anybody. I, I know there's more, more than meets the eye. But anyway, my point is, they ended up having a human kid. So you got this Satan-like entity, which is really, you know, a minor god, Essentially, uh, you know, the, the, the first created being that ends up having, you know, relations with, you know, a, 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 a female human and then gives birth to a normal-ish human. Why then would the the... You know, the whole story of the 200 watchers and the Book of Enoch and coming down, you know, from their spaceships. Did I say that? No, I'm sorry. Uh, from wherever they came. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, you know, the 200 watchers coming down. Um, and, you know, as fallen, we'll just say fallen sons of God, fallen angelic beings, probably with eternal life at that time before they were cursed, which would make them minor gods by definition. Sons of God, and they come down probably of the same, I don't know, makeup, their host, spiritual host bodies or whatever, the same composition essentially would be, I would submit, relatively similar to that of Satan in the garden. So you see this strange dynamic occur whereby Satan has relationships with Eve in a garden. And gives birth to a human baby, Cain. But yet, God pronounces a curse. Says, I'm going to put an enemy between your seed, which is almost like a reference to your genetics, your your DNA, your, you know. And then surprisingly, when that same dynamic occurs later in Genesis 6-4, aberrations are born. Strange anomalies are born. Giants are born. It's like the DNA was changed. And you know what I'm saying is do you see a connection there, Zen? And, and then we'll toss that over for a comment for, for you too as well, Joy. Uh, absolutely. In my opinion, um, if Genesis 3 did not happen and the Cain was already of hybrid nature, that Genesis 6 would not have occurred and even though it says you know in in the scriptures there's nothing given as to Cain being uh significantly different when you study the extra biblical materials and the rabbinical commentaries you get that he was uh different and this is why mm -hmm. she says um specifically where it says in the King James I received the man from the Lord it says in the other text that I received a man from the angel of the Lord, which is mm -hmm. interesting because Samael is the angel of death. And so I'll mm -hmm. read these two passages really quickly to give you an idea. These wow. are from the traditions of the Jews and the legends of the Jews. It says, And Adam knew his wife who had conceived by the angel Samael, was pregnant and bare Cain, whose resemblance was like the upper creatures. 
and not like the lower. And she said, I have got the man, the angel of the Lord. So here she's saying that he resembles the upper creatures. And so what upper creatures is she speaking about? And in the next verse, we get a better idea of what she is referencing. Cain's descent from Satan, who is the angel Samael, was revealed in his seraphic appearance. At his birth, the exclamation was wrung from Eve, I have gotten a man through an angel of the Lord. And so in my opinion, and when you study the Targum version, it says, and Adam knew Hava, his wife, who had desired the angel, semicolon, and she conceived and bare Cain, then it makes sense that it was her desiring the angel, which led to the conception of Cain, and that he was born with this seraphic appearance, which is like the seraphim angels. And the that's why, in my opinion, we see that Satan even though he was a fallen cherub, he is mentioned as having been transformed and being this serpent-like being, and that he was also called the ancient dragon, that old serpent. And so, and Christ also references his genealogy as being a den of vipers. And so Cain had a seraphic appearance as do all of the other children. Or we see in like even the Anunnaki um, their depictions as being feathered serpents. And so that's exactly what um, the serpent, the Nakash, the shining one, the enchanter in the garden that beguiled Eve, he is also mentioned as being uh, and having this serpent-like characteristic, these serpent-like traits. And we see that same affiliation to the bloodline royals, the serpent, the seed of the serpent, as it's mentioned in Genesis 3.15, the seed of the serpent, that they also have this reptilian nature. And so, mm -hmm. yes, in, in my opinion, that is why we see in um, Genesis 6 that Cain and his line already being hybrid. The watchers, when they fell um, in the Kebra Nagas, chapter 100, it gives us clear clarity that they were given human male bodies when they left their first estate, that Christ allowed them to descend here because they had made a promise that they would educate humanity about where they had fallen from. But instead of doing that, Immediately, they then made a pact to take wives of the daughters of Cain and to engage in sexual um, lust and in fornication with them. And because of that, after they had just made promises to Christ, um, because it does say the word of the Lord in the Keber Nagas, that um, he's the one that gave them these bodies of flesh. And allowed them to leave their first estate. But he gave them warning to not fall away. And to not um, fall into sin and carnality. And immediately they chose to go back on their word. And to indulge in the sexual orgies which they saw the daughters of Cain engaging in. And taking wives of all which they chose. They made this pact. And that's why they were severely punished. Dr. Joy? Uh, you know, the, the thing that I wrote uh, totally agrees with that in um, the Beguiled Eden to Armageddon series, especially in Volume 3. And I wanted to read a couple of little excerpts from that. In 1 John 3, 8, 15, it says, For this is the message that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one and slew his brother. The word of that uh, is a lineage word meaning mm -hmm. meaning his son. And yes. wherefore slew he him, because in his own works they were evil, and his brothers was righteous. It says, Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. 
We know that we have passed from death into life because we love the brethren. In other words, you love your brother. That was the way it was supposed to be. That was the way the lineage was supposed to run, in likeness of each other. And it says, he that loveth not his brother abideth in death. And we know that death was all about Satan. So whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Well, the first murderer was, you know, was Cain. So what I wrote in, in my book was if Cain and Abel were both sons of Adam and Eve who had been created by the Lord God with perfect DNA because Eve was taken from Adam and it was perfect DNA, then where did Cain get his behavior pattern to kill? While mm-hmm. most people want to blindly push that Cain was Adam's son, the real truth is very clear that Cain inherited his problem from his real father, Satan, the old serpent. Most all criminals with sociopathic tendencies show links to DNA genetic disturbances in their brain chemicals. Because Cain was the son of Satan, he was a mixed hybrid. His DNA would have changed from being pure human. And if you look at that, you can see that killing had never occurred up until really that point. We don't hear anything about something killed. And it, it tells us that he, that he was really the first murderer. So uh, it, it tells you that he was kind of like a vicious animal. In other words, he had that beastness in him. And so if we took and we look at Genesis 6, that there was, you know, these later giants, and we know that they were just killing and doing all kind of crazy things. It seems that the Bible specifically says that the beings that were born from the sexual union of fallen angels with the daughters of man, that they typically had those same killing characteristics and that they were not like, you know, Adam and Eve's children. So to me, if Adam and Eve were both genetically perfect in their DNA, that when they did have a child like Abel, that he was without blemish. In other words, he didn't have those tendencies. But Cain and those later giants were really all killers. I mean, you can read about them. They were killers and rebellious. They were takers. They had, you know, they took the women. It wasn't like they were uh, just mating with them and, and having a relationship because the Bible, again, when something had a sexual relationship like Adam and Eve, they were joined in marriage. They weren't just like the rest of the animals out there running around, you know, going with this one and that one and whatever. Only human beings have the law of holy matrimony, that you're supposed to follow that. You're supposed to be pure. You're supposed to do these things with a, you know, a man and a woman who are married, have a sexual relationship and produce children after your kind. So it seems to me that, uh, the fact that Cain's lineage consistently killed before and even after the flood, uh, you, you got to, you just you can't you can't erase it that Satan is really told to be the murderer, and his son was Cain, and Cain was the first murderer. So that can only mean that Cain and Satan, it's not merely symbolic, but that it's a physical connection between Cain being birthed from the serpent seed. You know, and yeah. First John three twelve says, "Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and slew his brother." And then on John eight forty four, it says, "Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do." He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. So you know, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Well, if that's the case, then. He's got to be directly connected to Cain. And um, and the, the thing that's most interesting to me when people start talking about, oh, my gosh, you know, like they can't get their mind wrapped around a snake having sex with a, a woman, they need to get away from that. It does not say snake. The word is, and the old dragon was the serpent. And you've got to come into context that it's not like a snake crawling around on the ground like a rattlesnake. You got to get the context of what it was. We also know when the angels came to Lot and when they came to Abraham, they looked like men. And in Sodom and Gomorrah, the men of the town who were homosexuals wanted to have sex with them. And that's why Lot tried to give him his daughters. Uh, So you can't 
you can't get locked in. And I think this is what messes up people because I have people say, oh, I just can't see Eve having sex with a snake. They need to just get that out of their minds. We're not talking about a rattlesnake. We're not talking about a moccasin. We're not talking about that kind of snake. And they'll say, well, Joy, he ate the dust of the ground. That's what he was cursed to do. What you have to understand is that the dust of the ground is dead stuff. In other words, our skin is flaking off, dust in a house. It's all dead stuff. What God was saying was that this being was going to eat the dead of this world. And he was sliding around in his belly eating the dead of this world. And that's what Satan does. It's all about death. There's nothing alive in all that. It's dead stuff. And that's what he's consuming. But I, I think, John, it's important for, to get this and in, in, in be able to, to absorb this information. You've got to come to the terms that it was not a rattlesnake and it wasn't a snake like that in that tree and that there was no apple and that when you eat with somebody in context of what Hebrew is written, it's having sex with them. Uh, and, and, and once you get that, then it makes sense throughout the entire rest of the Bible where, you know, um, the daughters of Lot, they, they went upon uh, their um, father, and then they had children. There's just a way that all this stuff happens, and it's sexual stuff, but they use different terminology like they saw their father's nakedness. That does not mean that they just saw him naked. It means they had sex with him. Uh, and if you look into Leviticus, it talks about the same thing. So these words, unfortunately, when we as English transcribers had to take Hebrew, in Hebrew there's like three or four different words for the word love. And in Hebrew for sex, there's all these other words like eat and whatever. Uh, and so when the translators sat down to write this out in English, they only had certain words to choose from. Uh, and, I, and, of course, I, like I say, I still think it goes back that they were afraid to use the word <laughs> sex maybe or it was done that way because they did not want us to know the whole truth. And that worries okay. me because I know Zen and I have worried about, you know, the secret societies and who could have had connections to have helped with those translations to tweak it a little bit so you don't get the whole picture. Let me throw this over the wall. <laughs> You know me. There's a place where no man has gone before. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. So <laughs> tie a ribbon on this, shall we? Okay. Christine Fitzgerald, Diana, Christine Fitzgerald after Diana's death said, on no uncertain terms, that Prince Charles she's seen him shape shift from a reptilian mm-hmm. being on a cot into a human. We've seen them on the news. We've seen them on. We've seen these the the Windsor family, these, and then we we see you know scars on the head of 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 uh, of uh, 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 well, yeah. you know uh, yeah all of them. Uh, you know even even you know I was just thinking of uh, what's her name uh, the the um, uh, princess of what's her name uh, Bill. But anyway, um, but it's it's all beside. My point is this: if we tie, if we look at, if we take our discernment. From six, you know, five thousand plus years ago, and we take our discernment from the things that we know that are pretty hard to deny. I mean, at this point, when you've got people like, you know, um, Transformation of America in the book Transformation of America, where you have, uh, you know, Kate Windsor. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Linda. Um, uh, but uh, when, when, when and, and you know, and uh, all these people saying, "Look, I've seen, I saw George W. Bush shapeshift from a reptilian being, but it might have been the drugs that they had me on." And blah, 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 blah. but but anyway, at this point in time, it seems to me beyond any shadow of a doubt that there are beings that are in their natural appearance, in their natural form, are essentially Nakash, two-legged serpent creatures. They're serpents. Mm-hmm. That would also explain why Jesus would say, you brood of vipers. That would also explain why Jesus would say in Luke ten nineteen to the 70, behold, I give you uh, authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. Okay, so you've mm-hmm. seen this reference continuously through the Bible about these serpent-like creature being things, but at the end of the day, they seem to have a human form. 
and you've got testimonies of even unbelievers and entire books written on this subject. And don't even get me going on the Apocrypha and the Testament of Amaran and all that other stuff. It all ties it together. At the end of the day, it sounds to me that God was referring to the serpent in in the in in the in the uh, in the garden. But the garden was the event that occurred happened as this entity was shape shifted into the form of a human. So it looked like you know a really good looking Prince Charles, if there is such a thing. <laughs> anyway, you know what I mean. You know, it's it, so so that kind of like to me. Shores up the mystery. It fills in the gap. God would still refer, just as Jesus did when he was talking to the Pharisees, Jesus didn't say, um, hey, you uh, bearded Hebrew guys that, oh, by the way, are part of the lineage of a serpent. He didn't say that. He said, you brood of viper. he come right out and call them what they were. And, and, and so could it be? You know what I'm saying? Could it be that God's reference to the serpent in the garden was simply God calling it the way it was, even though the event may have actually occurred as this being was shape-shifted into a human form? Well, you know, the word for Nakash is shining one, enchanter, one Mm -hmm. that uses magic and whispers with enchantments and secrets. And so, yeah, absolutely. And you know, there's many confirming witnesses for this as well. You know, the Bible tells us out of the mouths of two or three witnesses shall the truth be established. Well, we have Paul as a witness in Second Corinthians 11. He tells us that it was the beguilement of Eve by the serpent that led to her not being a chaste virgin, which when you understand that The only way a woman can not be a chaste virgin is if she is sexually, physically corrupted. Mm -hmm. And and that's the only way that she can lose her virginity. And so then, you know, Christ tells us in Matthew 13, in the parable um, of the kingdom, he says, uh, speaking about the, the enemy that snuck into the garden, And that when the blade was sprung up, meaning when the children came forth and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. And he says, let both grow together till the time of the end. But he also reveals it in the parable of the wheat and the uh, the parable of the tares of the field, that the wicked one is the father of the tares. And the wicked one, that's a reference to 1 John chapter 3, uh, verse 12. And where Dr. Joyce said, uh, Cain, who was of that wicked one, that word of meaning son of, child of, Mm -hmm. or descendant of. And so all of these things are clear. And when you just, you know, again, Christ tells us, and then there's a third confirming witness as well. In Isaiah chapter 14, where it talks about um, Lucifer, and it calls him, an abominable branch, which we know that, you know, the humanity as a um, family tree, we often are referenced as, uh, you know, the tree branches. That also has reference to humanity. And it says in this particular passage, just as it says in Matthew 13, where Christ said, you know, at the end, he'll send forth the angels as reapers to gather the tares for burning and the wheat for preservation, um, the Most High says in verse 21, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with their cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, saith the Lord. He calls the you know him the um, the the seed of evildoers. His children are the seed of evildoers, which again is the same thing as the reference of the tares. You go to Matthew 25, the parable of the goat and the sheep. I mean, over and over and over, we see these references and Christ, the father, the prophets, they are very clear about this information and it being truthful. And it's just because Nobody teaches it in the mainstream um, churches, and there's nobody, most pastors, preachers, and ministers just 
won't touch it, won't even address it, that the flock remains confused and ignorant as to what is really being revealed in the scriptures. And that and because of that, when they read the Bible, it doesn't make sense for them. And that's why, you know, Christ also said in Matthew 13 that um, that they would not understand. Uh, and that's why he spoke to them in parables. And But that it was we that have eyes to see, ears to hear, and a mind to understand that these truths would be revealed and come forth in discernment. And that's that's what's happening and now that we're at the end of days and the last generation it's individuals like ourselves that are really bringing forth this truth and helping people to make sense of the scriptures in a way that all of the so-called you know church authorities are not um in in my opinion feeding their flock in the way that they should you know, referring to the um, the whole story about the uh, you know the wheat and the tares and growing and the and the tares got to grow up amidst the wheat and da 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 and all that, and then you tie that you know all in you know, hum, you, know you harmonize it with all of the you know the the serpent seed line and all that kind of stuff and you and then then you, then you blend it into the storyline of the end times and 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 you see all these references to beasts and horns and things like that in Revelation and you. You see in Revelation 17, 13, verse 8, you see in Revelation 17, verse 8, multiple references whereby, for example, in 17, 8, it says, The beast that you saw it was, it is not, is sent out of the bottle and spit into perdition. And those who dwell on the earth will marvel, whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundations of the earth. So we have these entities, these beings on the earth, that were that, that, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of of the world. Okay, so there's actually three dispositions. There are those who were written in the book of life since before the foundations of the earth. There are those who are kicked out of the book of they're removed from the book of life, uh, you know, because they didn't they failed to overcome or whatever and they didn't make it because of their own free will. Thank you very much, um, Sister Joy. Uh, and then you've got these entities or beings that are, you know, not written in the book of life since before the foundation of the world, Revelation 17, 8, Revelation 13, 8. Uh, now, now, and then you take the testimony. I think this is just absolutely fascinating. But we had we had Brother Elvie Zapano on the program. He gives a lot of these incredible visions where he's taken into the future and stuff like this and sees things and the Lord shows him stuff, you know, like the stuff happening in the Great Tribulation and all that. And one of the things that he sh- was shown, and he's not the only one, by the way, was he was taken into the Great Tribulation. He was explaining that people in neighborhoods that were living beside at some point are going to shift into reptilian creature being things, and they're going to be chasing people through the streets and eating them, Mm -hmm. killing them. And I'm like, wow, is there going to be a shift a, I don't know, a dimensional shift or some kind of a, I don't know, spiritual dynamic shift or whatever, that whereby these tares that appear to be regular humans to us, just like anybody who would meet with Charles today would think, oh, he's a regular guy. I mean, um, uh, you know, Kathleen O'Brien in the book Transformation of America saw George W. Bush shape shift into a reptilian, but, but yet I was with one of the elders of a church here in the nearby town uh, that I live in right now in Tampa, uh, right down the road from my house. Um, and uh, one of the elders of the church there, uh, we went out to dinner one day, and he said, oh, no, George W. Bush is a good guy. I met with him, and I shook his hand, and he's, he's a good Christian. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, dude. dude. So, I, you know, it's like so. So these things have the ability to completely masquerade themselves in such a fashion that even people that are really pretty oiled up with the Holy Spirit still can't see. And I'm thinking, when you look at this whole story, that the the mystery is going to be completely unraveled once we get into the the really dark periods that um, deep in the book of Revelation is talking about, where there's beast this, beast that, beast this, horns this, horns that. I think there's a lot more to this than just a bunch of countries, you know, uh, and a country leaders like a lot of people think there are. I mean, you know, I see in Revelation 17 where it says these are of one mind. 
You know, that, re- mm-hmm. that, scene, that just smacks of that whole concept of the hive mind, that demonic hive it mind is. that you cross. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Joy. Well, you know, I, I, I talk about that in my Beguile series about that beehive mind because your queen bee controls all your worker bees. And if that queen bee dies, then the worker bees leave the nest. It's a universal consciousness that they're all connected to one another. And I know that that's hard for us to get a grasp of because we are just common human beings created by God. But that serpent lineage, they have that extra pineal gland, all C and I in their forehead, and they are very much connected by it. Um, and, and people that don't really get the context of what that workable eye is in our forehead and why that 144,000 at the end of days have to be sealed in their forehead is because if they were not sealed, that beehive mind would control them. Now, I truly believe that there's going to come a day, and I believe that, that the church will be taken out of it. I believe it will be caught away. But when it comes down to the great wrath, these beings that you're talking about, it tells that they're going to be had fingers in their tails, that men will want to die and they cannot die, that if the days uh-huh. will not cut short that flesh would not be able to make it through that i think there's going to be once the church is removed and 144,000 are left and they're sealed in their forehead to keep them from getting caught up in that universal consciousness and control like that uh the flesh will have to suffer during that period of time i think is beyond our even our imaginations of whatever because you know if if the angels could shape shift into humans like we know they did for uh, Abraham and Lot and we know they came upon the daughters of man and we know that they had sex with them and we know that the serpent was involved uh, you know with Eve and I, and I, I wanted to make a comment that uh, the word beguiled actually means seduced in, in, in the strange strong concordance I think it's 1818 I think is what it is but it says that she was that he beguiled her and then she ate with him. So that means he seduced her and then she had sex with him. And that's exactly what the King James Version says right there, right in plain, you know, English. If you take it back to the Hebrew, um, but in doing so, that means that lineage is here that they do have those serpentine traits, and because they have that serpent connection and that universal consciousness. They are totally aware of what's going on. They're all connected to one another. And if you really look at lineages, if you go back and you look at the, the, the royals and like, like you're talking about Bush and those kind of people, you find out they're all, they're all connected. And when we started, first started doing lineages, we were like, why is it that all the blue bloods have the highest prestige in our world? And then the next level are the ones that's running the show, the president and the prime ministers and whatever, you find out they're all connected to that same lineage. And then, of course, you look at what the royals wore. They always wear things with serpents around their neck and serpents. I mean, they're they're doing it right in our face. But because we've been so misled in our own theology, we don't realize the serpents are laughing at us. And I've always said, if you watch the royals when they wave at the commoners, they do a little wave that looks just like a little cobra going back and forth with their hands. They don't like wave yeah. like me and you wave. They go back and forth. That's the royal way to wave, and that is a cobra that's waving at you. That goes back to the Egyptians who had the cobras on their foreheads and had all those cobras. It is, it's an enchanting. They're using these things to enchant us. They keep us in turmoil. They want us to have race wars. They want us to hate each other. They want to cause so much division between us that they can lock us down and then destroy us. That's what they're after. That's what they've been after since the day that those serpent lineages came out of Eden trying to destroy even the lineage of which Christ would be born. And they tried every way they could. And I, and I trace those lineages in my books where they were trying so bad. And even God kept telling his people, look, when you come out into this wilderness, you kill every man, woman, child, and even their animals. The reason he told his people, his chosen people, his Hebrew people, his pure Israelites to do that 
is he did not want them to have any genetic mixing. And the moment that they did with the Babylonians, then that's where you get the term Jew. And there's a difference between the Khazarian Jew and the Sephardic Jew. When Hitler went to kill the Jews, he went after the Sephardic Jews because those are the pure Israelites. They are the pure Hebrews. He let the Khazarian Jews go, and they started the state of Israel, all connected under the British Empire who owned all of that, which is the royals. So it's all connected. You know, and I tried to go through this in my volume three of Bagal. It is all connected. They are ruling over us. They are waving at us like cobras, and we're so stupid because we <laughs> we fight over, you know, did, did they have sex in the garden? You know, Zen and I have been <laughs> put down so bad because oh, we're trying to tell the truth, but we're exposing these people. We're exposing who is destroying us and who the wheat and tares are. Well, right. speaking of speaking right. of uh, exposing, I can't resist. <laughs> um, uh, I'll just hey, look. You know, I report, you decide, right? Um, this is from April twentieth of twenty sixteen. Uh, this is was printed by BreakingChristianNews dot com, uh, and it's a reprint of a Daily Mail article uh, out of the United Kingdom. And I am going to quote the uh, headline as it appeared in twenty sixteen: "Kissing Cousins?" Question mark. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton share royal ancestry. United Kingdom. Uh-huh. The news is currently circulated mm-hmm. in several media outlets that Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton and Republican rival Donald Trump are distant cousins. However, the story actually broke almost two years ago in the United Kingdom-based Daily Mail, but nonetheless is still interesting, especially considering that each is a leading candidate in, in, the, you know, in, the, in the, the race and everything, and it shows the AP Newswire and all this other stuff. It says Trump's latest nickname for for Clinton is Crooked Hillary. She doesn't seem to be uh, like like him much either. But then again, isn't uh, that the, the uh, often the case with relatives? The two candidates, it seems, are 19, 19th cousins descending mm-hmm. from the 14th century of first Duke of Lancaster, John of Galt. And his third wife, Catherine Swinford, according to the ancestry site MyHeritage.com. And it goes deep in the, the weeds about who, who they were connected to, this, that, and the other thing. And it's amazing. I mean, it's just amazing. And everybody's going, Donald Trump. I mean, there was just a Benjamin Faircloth, Pastor Faircloth, just put out a, a big thing uh, about there's um, – Billboards all over the place in Texas, with Donald Trump's face pointing, you know, his finger straight ahead, with like quotes out of the scripture saying the word of God and and and, and you know a big American flag. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you are, are you kidding me? Don't you see we're being played? <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean. And, the United States is Babylon the Great, and if you want typology, if you want some foreshadowing, then who is Trump? He's Nebuchadnezzar. He's putting the iron yoke of Babylon over Babylon the Great. He's preparing the world for World War III, but nobody can see it. We're just going along, following along, going, oh, this is great. Everything's happy. Don't pay attention to the man behind the curtain. I mean, it's just unbelievable to me. It's all connected, but you have to, like – Break away from the crowd of the lemmings and the sheep that are jumping over the cliff, following every, you know, I'm not going to name any names, but every evangelical leader that happens to think that the Seven Mountain stuff is telling the truth while it's not even in the Bible. But anyway, Joy, uh, or or no, Zen, Zen, did you want to comment? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the whole thing with the facade of the left right paradigm is just controlled opposition and we have had cousins of the bloodlines um knowingly since al gore and george bush john Kerry, george bush even obama and john mccain you know obama is was always believed to be an outsider but he's of the same family he's part of these blood royal elitists and so yeah it does not surprise me at all that uh, that Trump and Hillary are also kissing cousins. Uh, that's something that I revealed and wrote and had part of Lucifer, father of Cain, too, you know, all the way back and Dr. Joy even before then, 2010. And 
Uh, you mentioned this in 2006, Dr. Joyce. So, I mean, there's we've known about these. This is why I don't get caught up in the politics and, you know, everybody thinking Trump was an outsider. We would never even have them offered up as candidates for presidency unless they were part of these families and they were going to toe the line. Um, I mean, you just, it doesn't happen. And so that's why people have to not get in, involved in the controlled opposition, but get into the word and get into um, the study of people like Dr. Joy and I that are bringing forth in our work how to discern correctly what is revealed in the scriptures because God reveals all these things throughout his work. He, you know, he tells us about, um, for such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves in the, into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. I say again, let no man think me a fool if otherwise, yet as a fool receive me that I may boast myself a little. So, I mean, we are told that they are going to act as if they are Christ. Even the Antichrist is going to be a false Savior Messiah. And so, you know, nothing new under the sun. My people are killed for lack of knowledge. Amen. <laughs> well said. Praise God. Did you want to have? Uh, did you want to um, close with a comment, uh, uh, Sister Joy, and then even with a prayer because we're down to the last five minutes. And oh, by the way, both of you need to share with people where they can go to get more information about your work. Uh, I, I want to. I want to uh, comment about uh, that. Diana tried to tell everybody publicly that they were. Royals were lizards. She literally used the term lizards, but nobody was really picking up on what she was trying to tell them. And they were going to kill her because she was going to run her mouth about what they were up to. And they did kill her. And they did kill her. Yeah, she, that, that little thing where they try to tell you that they that she just hit a pillar and died down there, my books show that, that that Mercedes was actually controlled it was a literally controlled to run it into the place where they ran it in because it was a sacrificial pillar for evil. And, and the fact that she stood publicly and tried to say lizards, but the problem is that most people don't understand this concept that, that Zen and I are trying to bring out there. If the world had understood that they are lizards and she's standing there telling you they're lizards and they're fixing to kill me, we might have been a little bit more on top of it. But the problem is that has been kept so hidden that she's telling us and everybody's just looking at her like, oh, lizards, what, what, what does she mean? And now, after the fact, it's very clear that she knew what was coming down the pike and she was trying to express it in every form and fashion that she could. And nobody was listening because, like Zen said, we don't have the knowledge that we need to be able to fight against an enemy that's all around us, trying to choke the the spirits out of us and take our souls straight to hell with them. And that's what scares me about all of this is that if we don't get the bigger picture and you don't build your house on the firm foundation, then you're missing out on what's really happened in this world. Uh, as far as being able to find my work, uh, go to www.drjoy, D-R-J-O-Y-E, that's drjoy with an E dot com. All my books are listed there. Click on the links. It'll take you to where you can find them. And my research is also a form that you can fill out there that you can email me, and I'll be glad to try to respond back to any questions that anyone has about my work or my research. And you can follow me on Facebook awesome. under Joy, J-O-Y-E, P-U-G-H. That's awesome. Praise God and Zen. All of my books and Dr. Joy's books can be found at sacredwordpublishing.net.com. Uh, also, my author page is zengarcia.com. Um, and, you know, I do the radio broadcast every Wednesday and Thursday. We do an Aramaic Targum uh, search uh, study on Saturdays. All that information is on my Facebook page under Zen Garcia. Our interviews and videos are 
found on YouTube under Zen Garcia and Endeavor Freedom. That's awesome. Praise God. And Sister Joy, you want to close with a prayer tonight? I'll be glad uh, to do that. And I just hope you'll have Ben and I back on. <laughs> this, this went by this way this too fast. This was great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so oh, we can have definitely back together yeah. like this again. Right. <laughs> this was wonderful oh, yeah, to be able we, to we, talk we, about everything we're talking about. We're, we're going to. Oh yeah, it's, it's we're 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 going to unless Armageddon breaks loose or whatever, you know, <laughs> or the great delusion, well, the people, uh, you know. The more people that, that we can warn and explain this because it's so taken out of context and it's always talked behind our backs and we don't get the chance to really just expound upon the truth of the matter. And when people can hear it from this kind of level, I think it really helps them wake up and understand that we're we're just not throwing something out there. We're really telling them the truth and that they need to be really aware that we're living at the end of days. So I think I thank yeah. you for the opportunity to do this tonight, John. Well, plus it also I think it really expands in a big, big way um, our role in the days to come. When this stuff starts to be made manifest as a reality around us as the days grow darker, we're going to understand what it is we're being commanded to do when Jesus said, Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions. It changes the whole meaning of the text. Praise God. But anyway, thank you so much, uh, both of you, for joining us tonight. And Sister Joy, would you close with a prayer? Lord, we just ask you right now that you would bless everyone that listens to this show tonight in a way that their eyes can be open to see the truth that you are trying to reveal to your children. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you for everything that you have ever done for us and that you're doing for us in the future. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to have shared the truth and the knowledge that you have given Zen and I and John. Lord, we thank you for the program that John has and that he is able to reach out into the world so that others may hear the truth and be able to come to understanding that they need, that we are not just mere grains of sand, that there is a rhyme and a reason, Lord, and that we can see that you and you alone are who we need to always turn our eyes toward. We thank you for this day, for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, we ask you that you lead and guide us. Father, we just ask that you would just bring us to even more understanding and an opportunity to return back and, and speak about your goodness. Thank you again for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you both for joining us. Sister Joy, Brother Zen, Lucifer, Father of Cain, Eden, Armageddon. We shall do this again with a part two. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you all for joining us tonight. We'll see you at the Divine Healing and uh, Deliverance Program with Pastor Aaron Wagner, 8 to 10 p.m. this Tuesday. God bless you all for being with us tonight. This is some cool stuff. Praise Jesus. God bless you all. Good night, Al. Shalom. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Be blessed, all.